like we might have a stream. We've got a stream. We've got a stream. We've got a stream. Okay, so I'll get you a link in a second. Oh, a link will come up in a minute. I'll post that in the same place I posted it before. Um, okay, for those of you that are listening to this, um, this stream in video is proudly brought to you by What Is ZS. We do apologise for all the technical issues tonight. We have had major technical issues, but anybody that knows YouTube knows all about it uh, because we all go through these little hiccups and headaches and everything like that. Um, and there's nothing we can actually do about it. There really is nothing we can do about it except try our hardest to actually get this information out to you. We have had major uh, hiccups. There's a go. Another hiccup there. Just instant. Instant hiccups. They drive you nuts. And um, so you've got to overcome it. We were just discussing the whole thing. So pretty much we had a practice run at our stream. And because we had that practice run, we sort of know what we're going to talk about. But the thing is, it wasn't meant to be. Unfortunately, those of you that could actually hear parts of the stream, if you heard anything from the stream, um, I really, truly, truly apologise to everybody about it because of the simple fact that um, shit does happen, and it happens quite often, especially when it comes to YouTube. Um, it's driving a lot of creators nuts at the moment because we're trying to stream to YouTube YouTube tells us these addresses to go to, everything like that. And unfortunately, there's one thing that they haven't learnt to detect, and that is if there's sound coming through or not. So unfortunately, um, I do apologise to everybody for it. I do apologise to what is this, what is ZS.com for the issue. And... Um, I'll make it up to you. So those of you out there in uh, the land of the YouTube, here we go. This video and ad is sponsored by ZS.com. What is ZS.com? Sorry, everybody. I'm just so tired after doing this three times. And um, But yes, if you're out there and... Yeah, watch that first stream. I really, too, truly apologise, folks. I'm not going to put you through the intro again. But, um, yeah, here we go. Let's try number three or four, is it? I think I can't remember. What, how many times have we tried this, Michael? Three times? Uh, yeah, four. Yeah, four. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, You're still planning. Yeah, it's, it's a bit ridiculous. But um, we actually have a stream. It's working. Hang on. Oh, let's just see if we have sound. I do want to check the sound first. Number. Yes, we have sound. I can't remember. Well, how many times have we tried this? Okay, so we have sound. I do apologise, everybody. Uh, above me on the screen is uh, Michael Kilmurray. Michael Kilmurray is a... Um, a gentleman that has joined the cannabis party, he's the same as me, jump ship from the other parties. And a lot of people are doing that now. And our party is slowly growing. And this is the first year that um, we actually have a chance in an election where if we can get our, our people into parliament and to get them into parliament, we need you, the people out there that um, can actually help out and um, do what you can. And so if you can't do anything, yeah, don't worry about it. But if you can actually help out, it would be truly greatly appreciated. We need as many of you. Like we've got early voting booths happening. We've got the actual election day happening and we're trying to get manned volunteers to volunteer at the polling booth just to hand out tickets, just to do bit of a drawing just to do that just to say here hi how you going um we're like we're the cannabis party you get the spiel everybody does a spiel in the morning works it out what a spiel is is what you virtually should say to the customers and now this is i'm addressing all the volunteers that are actually already out there because i can tr trust me what i've done in my life um 
there's been nothing but promotions. So, like, fair enough, I've done tiling and other jobs like that. I was a tradesman. I've got a couple of job trades behind me. But my passion was always advertising. And um, this is advertising. Most of the stuff I do is advertising. And if I can help out the cannabis party with what my knowledge is by getting some of the candidates out there. Um, and I thank God that it wasn't a candidate on here tonight. Um, it might have really upset them. But as it was, there was the dramas with, we had first troubles with Microsoft Teams because the other person couldn't get Teams. So we had to switch to Zoom, thought I had it all done. Then all of a sudden, because I had Zoom open for too long, it wanted to start charging me. So we had to shut it down and everything. And the only way I could do it is Teams because I've been on with Teams for quite some time. And um, the thing is, it's slow, but surely we can get our party out there. But we need help to do it. We can't just do it on our own. We're, we're slugging our guts as out as it is. We, do, we get to what events we can get to. Um, we have got members out there that have non-stop worked since the start of this um, election period. And I'm amazed at what some of the stuff is, is that they do. Karen Burge, I think she's coming on a Friday night. Karen um, was like so flustered the other day and I can't blame her, she's got a heavy workload. Uh, found out what she was doing and I said, look, is there anything I can do? And she said, look, if you can look after these four uh, early voting booths for me and everything, organise the posters and everything. And I said, yeah, not a problem. Um, went out and scoped them out today, made sure I knew where they were. Got took on a, um, about a, I'd say it would have been about 10K, it ran me around all Newcastle trying to get me to the same place that it virtually would have been, I just left from, wasn't that far from where I left, which was King Street one. And then it took me all the way up Merriweather to Bar Beach, down through Merriweather, up to Glebe Road, halfway up to Adams Town, then back around, then actually finally brought me back all the way to Union Street, down Union Street, up Parkway, and the bloody thing was so close to my chemist, and it would have been four blocks from where I was prior. And um, I just thought, Google. Again, computers. You can't trust them. Uh, sort of, they haven't <laughs> perfected them. They're serious. Computers have not been perfected. Tonight's show is an example of how bad computers are at the moment. Everybody thinks that they are the bee's knees. They're bloody not. It's The old saying is, I'm a, I started out as a computer program. I really did. I, when I was 18, I studied uh, on a VAX 11780. And if anybody knows what a VAX 11780 is, that's what they used to run the whole VHP on, one computer. A massive thing, you know, like punch card ones. Yeah, I programmed the punch carder. And um, I even wrote software that actually, one, of my, one line of my software of, of program I wrote, the teacher reckoned it was the best thing he ever saw. And he said, can we use it? And then all of a sudden, someone else asked me if they could use it. Someone else asked me if they could use it. And then a one of the companies, I will not say which company, uh, they make routers, asked me if they could use it for their routing software because it was a very sensibly written program. And, um, but this one line was universal. And they were able to use it in so many different things. So I made a little bit, I think I made about five grand out of that. That was quite good. Back then, five grand was a lot of money. Uh, it gave me my very first start for my very first business uh, all because I sold that one program but one thing we were taught garbage in garbage out and unfortunately computers today have that same issue and still have that same issue and we can't really do anything about it because of the simple fact that um, unless they actually fix the problem, sorry folks I'm a bit blind when everything comes up close I'm just about to pop uh, Michael's third invitation to a stream. Um, that um, we've tried because we've done it now four times. The first time, and I do apologise to everybody out there that was in here when it happened. You sat there through some of you. I, one of you I noticed was popping in, popping out, popping in until Wojo popped up and said that um, there was no sound. I've gone on, no, and I tested and there was no sound. Michael wasn't getting any sound. I wasn't getting any sound. I got Michael back, but then I couldn't get me back. I had to shut the thing down. So computers can be a bit of a nightmare. So 
I do apologize for it and, and as any of my subscribers will tell you it's not the first time this has happened uh, it used to happen more when we were using um, uber conference it happened so much when we were using uber conference it was an absolute joke and it truly truly was it's a, we had breakdowns i think i think the very first show that andrew catalaris came on um and it really was that bad like we had so many issues we ended up having to do it another day because the whole thing just collapsed the whole system of uber conference on the day collapsed and um it, it happens and it really does it really does happen and um sorry i just got to do something um so people know that we're actually on. So it's, I'm just letting everybody know. I'm letting, I'm giving Michael the link. I'm giving everybody a link, and um, so that everybody can come in and watch. Now, because this is going on, um, and we've been already on for a little while, we may actually have to even shut down the teams. That's if you want to come back, Michael. You're quite welcome to. Um, when it gets up to the three hours, we might have to shut it down. And just this, not the stream. We won't be shutting down the stream. The stream will not shut down. Um, it will just be the Teams meeting shut down and I'll have to send him a new link, that's it. And um, it's the only thing that will be affected. It'll, he'll disappear for a second and then he'll be back. And um, But the thing is, everybody, you um, out there that are in this world and have actually turned around and said, that you can do this, you can do that, um, have come across and said these things. And unfortunately, like I've been told so many by so many people that they were gonna help and everything like that. And uh, yeah, I've had a couple of people that I know are helping. One friend, I know he can't turn up. He's got actually, I think his knee is even a bit worse than mine. And um, he's, been disabled all his life and um but the thing is it's sort of we uh, over the years have trusted each other and like if he tells me something i know he's going to do it and he is he's actually out there helping me i've got him running around all his cannabis friends and um just virtually um saying telling them to uh if they really want to um get this legalized that we need it to turn around and have the volunteers. And I know, he, and I tend to one, he was straight on the phone because both of us know a lot of people that smoke cannabis. Like we grew up in a pub and I spent my beginning of my adult years with this dude. Uh, and like to this day, like we still talk, we might not see each other all the time. It's pretty much like Greg, we worked together, became good friends. And we only ever get to see each other rarely and rarely talk, but we still talk. And um, oh, like these are people I trust. And like I know Greg said, he's going to help up in Tweed. Um, my mate, the other mate today, he said, well, I can't actually come to the booth and help you, but um, I can. I said, well, look, if you can't come to the booth, could you do this? And could you get every single one of the cannabis smokers that you know to at least thing give, give them my number, tell them to contact me and um, because we need as many volunteers because if even if they're not in this area i can direct them to the right people in that area where they want to do the volunteering and everything like that so while i've been doing that i've actually just been as you can see on the screen i've actually just been uh emailing everybody in the facebook groups that we are in so everybody knows so we we've got a couple of viewers already and um thank you for coming back i do apologize and I do apologise that you had to watch Dead Air. And I'm so sorry. I am so ashamed that I presented Dead Air for one hour. And I do. And I am very, very sorry about that, everybody. It just, it does happen. Everybody that is on YouTube will tell you. It's every YouTuber's nightmare is Dead Air. What Dead Air is, no sound. There is absolutely zero sound because something had happened. And it, it, I've worked out what it was too, Michael. It, what it was, was because we went into Teams, I set everything up for Teams with my microphone for Teams. Then I set it up for Zoom. Then I set it up for um, Teams again. But I forgot that I had to reset it up in the OBS. 
So that's what it turned out to be. Because when I realised that when we took that little break, I realised that the OBS sound had been turned off by the other things, and it does do that. It's sort of, again, a computer issue. And it does happen. It, that happens very regularly. You open one thing, it'll shut down your camera. Um, if you're using your camera now, you open up another thing, it might shut that camera down and it takes control. And this is what all these little software programs that you give authorised to and access to, they take control. And that's what happened to us. They took control of my computer, cut my sound off to OBS, and hence we are, to us, this is us. It's sort of like, I'm going to shut up for a sec. That's all anybody saw, my mouth moving, Michael's mouth moving. That's it. It's sort of, and us talking to each other, but we pretty much know. I got to know a fair bit about Michael in the process, actually. I know that uh, Michael has some disabilities and everything like that, like myself. Uh, he is a fellow member of the Cannabis Party and just as passionate as I am about the Cannabis Party. Uh, I know that he has had problem with medications, uh, certain medications and everything. Uh, has been on dangerous drugs like myself. And by the way, this is what the government gives me for free. The government gives it, and uh, where is it? I'll cover all the information up. And I'm just gonna, well, I'm not gonna cover up the phone. No. That's how much they cost, 77 bucks, if you've got to pay for them. But they give them to me for nothing. And they really do. The government freely gives that to me. They freely give me Panadine for it. Unfortunately, I have to take these most of the year. At Christmas, I was able to withdraw down from the drugs uh, because I had managed to save two thousand dollars up. Oh, actually, two and a half grand, and every cent that I had and everything. And let's just say after they jacked my damned home insurance up, it's it's going to take me longer to save up for the next batch. It needs to be on the PBS. It really does. But see, to get this on the PBS, to get this record rec how do you say it recreational recreational use and by the way the federal government was told by the uh, the tga in the year 2006 that's 13 years ago folks 13 years ago that the tga the therapeutic goods administration of australia recommended for recreational use as a much better alternative to alcohol. That's something I forgot to mention when we were practicing. <laughs> but the thing is, it's sort of, a lot of people don't know these facts, Michael, and they don't. Uh, they think cannabis is the, the devil's drug. Or have, it, ha, have you watched, actual watched Reefer Madness, Michael? Have you ever watched Reefer Madness? Uh, I love it. Uh, it's sort of, yeah. it's stupid, isn't it? I'm going to actually try and call it up. Actually, I'm going to try and get it up. Ready for the madness. But can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Because everybody missed that before because of what was actually happening. So while I'm actually calling up Reefer Madness, can you just let everybody know a bit about yourself and everything, mate? Don't worry about the phone yeah. going off, mate. Uh, sort of, um, yeah. When I was uh, about, I've struggled with, um, all my life struggled with drug and alcohol um, problems and that, not just uh, hard drugs like ice and heroin. Well, um, and, but I haven't, I've always, I've been in and out of rehab, like, you know, without too much success. Um, the longest time I'd get up, and, you know, and, um, and then I uh, got diagnosed with a malformation on my brain because I was having seizures. And, um, the, the dog. Uh, Michael, by the way, you don't have to talk about the, the headaches I was having. Yeah. If you don't want to talk about any of this, Michael, you don't have to, by the way. Yeah, it just kept getting worse. And, and, and I took it the time between the seizures, the, between the seizures um, was, yeah, they, they, I had one every month 
and then all of a sudden I'll start and have them weekly and with the headache and that. Um, it happened to be Anzac uh, went to the dawn service Anzac morning and my mate said to me, he said, why don't you have a cane? I've been like, help us sleep and that. And it's meant to help me with a go. And, um, and like the distance and the seizures, like, you know, I started getting two, three months up. Um, and the seizures were like, um, I started off having chronic chronic seizures where now I only have little cramp hours like where it's just been out goes. Um, when, you say grand, talk, when you say grand mal, but, uh, um, how do you mean grand yeah. mal? I'm sort of I know what a seizure looks like, but what's a grand mal seizure? Seizure. Oh, oh it's just um. So grand mal only twitches like in. Your body, body and that, um, where the tonic clonic is when your whole body is shaking and that, you know what I mean? It's, um, so the, yeah. the bad one, the bad one. Know. All the technologies of it, <laughs> just, yeah. I can just tell when I've um, had a tonic clonic because, yeah, they, um, I'm out yeah. for a while. And, yeah, yeah and but that's not what's going on. Things too, haven't they? Because uh, my friend uh, used to get seizures all the time, and um, like this is back in the day when we were told to hold their tongue and um, get them on their side and make sure they didn't bite their tongue and put something in their mouth. And mate, we used to get a new uh, thing to cure seizures and everything like that, but. Again, when Gordon, um, because he's, that was his name, uh, when Gordon had a really, really bad one one day, and I mean massive, that's why I knew about Caesar, but I never knew what they were called. And um, he, was in a, he was in a bad way, and we're on the phone to the ambulance, and um, I think Dad was doing exactly what Mum's telling him, because Mum's listening to the ambos, Dad's doing it, and uh, Gordon's just going bang, they ended up rushing me, he was in a really, really bad way for nearly two weeks uh, and uh, after that because we, did, we didn't know anything about it and everything like that and it's ironic where they, they, they helped you as well um, because cause when you said ground mow, it just instantly reminded me of Gordon and um, when Gordon yep. first tried cannabis, same thing happened to him, it actually helped him and I've seen so many people get helped by it it's just beyond a joke. But the problem is... Um, <laughs> sorry? But my parents are um, dead against it. Like, and after mum seen the results with the first lot of oil that I had, had, she was buying it before she died for me, you know? <laughs> um, because, yeah, you just could see that it brought that like um, um, that I could talk properly again. Um, was you know, I'd trip on just, uh, trying to pronounce certain words and that and, um, all the time. Like you know, where now I can sort of at least attempt them. Like you know, where I'm too scared of bringing on a seizure by trying it. If you know what I mean. Um, but, yeah, just, um, and you, didn't know, yeah, and you didn't know it would actually help, yeah. Yeah. Um, But it's not, like, just, not just the seizures either, you know, like I was telling you, um, on the 23rd of August this year, I'll be four years clean from alcohol and all other drugs, like, you know, and my mum died two years ago, like, it was greater order, you know, and, and yeah, you know, she's the only, like, dead, like, it's cannabis that has stopped me from going and picking up the alcohol and other drugs, you know, yeah. um, and yeah, it's been a lot safer. Yeah. You know? Okay, um, now I've got, a, I've got a question. Being a family man, has cannabis smoking affected your family? Yes, no, uh, please, be, please be blunt. Yes. yes. I mean, 
Him and my father don't talk mainly because, like, yeah, he, he doesn't agree with him. He, he doesn't, doesn't, it's the fact it's illegal, what he doesn't agree with. And, um, like, the, yeah, you know, we can never sit down together and just have the social conversation with me and you, like me and you are now, because. Yeah, you know, he likes, he likes to, sit to sit and have his alcohol. alcohol. Like, yeah. you know, I, I wouldn't, I'm not allowed to sit, to sit and have my, you know. Um, yeah. it's talking, just about, talking, about a com- yeah. talking about a conversation, uh, we're going to have to uh, sit down uh, and have a beer one day, man, yeah. But sort of, uh, uh, like, uh, uh, you know, um, sort of so as far as, far as like, like that, that goes, like, 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 yeah. Caused me a lot of trouble for yeah. getting yeah. the boys and that to start with, yeah. just even the mention of it, you yeah. know. Um, oh, but, like, I think yeah, we've yeah, all been yeah. through that part. Now, um, yeah. I've got a, like, kids. I actually gave one of me, sent one of me kids back to the mum just to, to do the right thing by my son, you know. Yeah. Um, because he's, he's, he's COVID, he hasn't been going to school and he's been stuck in his bedroom. So, um, yeah, you know, to try and switch something up to get him, get him yeah. going. But, um, I, think, I think COVID I've affected a, everybody, yeah. But we, I'd rather not talk about that subject if we can. I'd, I'd rather avoid that subject altogether. Um, got a, sort of, oh, yeah, I oh, know, they, they'll shut us down. They'll shut us down. Yeah, if you talk of that yeah, subject, yeah. they'll shut us down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, um, I've got a 14 year old that's ADHD. Yeah. Um, but and his medications ever since he was five, six years. And now he just refuses to have anything. Huh? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. They went it's, that it's way. The stigma, oil, it's the stigma oil, that does it. You know? Yeah. yeah. It, it, would be so, it would be benefit, so benefit for him. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but do you, know, do you know the reason the reason why the stigma is there? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, you've actually seen it. I don't know if anybody else has seen it. I've got a, a very short section of the Reefer Madness video. This is what actually caused the stigma, is this actual video back all that time and that stigma's never left us it has never left us because everybody thinks we're like this you might only hear this unless you're sitting there watching that link i gave you um you know, like this is one uh where is it no here's two minutes of reefer madness these high school boys and girls are having a hop at the local soda fountain innocently they dance innocent of a new and deadly menace lurking behind closed doors. Marijuana, the burning weed with its roots in hell. In this film, you will see the ease with which this vicious plant can be grown in your neighbor's yard, rolled into harmless looking cigarettes, hidden in an innocent shoe or watch case. In this startling film, you will see dopesters lure children to destruction. We're going over to Joe's place. Why don't you come along? We have a date to play instead of double. Oh, you can play any time. Come on, we'll have some laughs. Can I go along with you? Sure. Hey, I'll see you at dinner, sis. If you want a good smoke, try one of these. You will meet Bill, who once took pride in his strong will as he takes the first step toward enslavement. Of course, if you're afraid. Smoking the soul-destroying reefer, they find a moment's pleasure, but at a terrible price. Debauchery, violence, murder, suicide. See, those of you that just watch that and everything like that, there's nothing like that, is it, Michael? No. Oh, God, no. Um, <laughs> it's... The best way you describe it, like, because there's not one cannabis smoker out there that can deny there is a small period of time, and it's about two hours, and I don't know anybody that says any longer than two hours, where you get a heady effect. 
and like yeah, yeah, yeah. you might be if if you're smoking um, like something like or you've taken a an oil like topaz. Uh, topaz is a knockout oil. Topaz is the one you you use to sleep. Where there's ones that you use to keep awake and be normal and everything like that and have a good day and just just be relaxed. But the thing is with cannabis, it's sort of because of what actually happened back then, everybody thinks that we go nuts when we're on it. And by the way, you have actually been watching me use the remnants. Yeah. Oop, oh, I need to charge my battery, damn. <laughs> oh, I can't take it anymore, but that was me when I was using that. Um, I'm just trying to share something with you. Where is it? Um, so you can see something. It's just trying to video details. Yeah, there we go. Is that it? Video details. Sorry, mate, just bear with me one second. Can you can you see that now? Oh, hang on, no, wrong one. Oh, wrong one. Shared the wrong page. Sorry, mate. Sorry, mate. Yeah, I, shared, I shared the wrong page. I do apologise. Um, that's the problem when you're going through when you're trying to share something. I'm trying to make it so you can actually see something that's going on on the video, uh, the live streaming one. So we go back. Oh, where is it? Damn. Again computers they drive you bloody nuts ah there we go so you can actually see what's going on on the video now so can you see that yeah should be on, yeah, yeah. Should be on the Light screen there. Yeah. Uh, sorry folks as I said earlier we've had a few dramas and everything like that to where um, yeah, <laughs> no sound everything like that she's been a bit of a nightmare of a night but that's the hassles and the fun of YouTube and I've got to admit they are really uh, fun and everything. But the thing is, what you've got to realise is that um, when we're on YouTube, we're trying to do our best to get the message out there. And we've got a really strong message. For once, our party, and I mean, over the years, our party's grown. And um, like, like everything else, we've got our own problems within the parties. We had, um, in the very early stages, I remember there was a little bit of inviting the whole lot. And uh, that's why I didn't join it. But then after the year, I saw this party getting stronger and stronger and stronger to where the last election, we actually took 3% of the vote. And for us, like, we're, God, I don't even think we manned that many boos, but we did man boos all over, all over the uh, country. And that, just those man boos were what brought our numbers up. So can you imagine if we had enough people out there to actually come along and stand there for, what is it, eight hours that we're there for? Or even if it's only four hours, swap over with somebody else. And um, can you imagine what, what would actually happen? We might actually get all of the candidates. Um, how many is there again? I'm trying to think. There's one, two, three, four. I know there's 12 definite. There's 12, definite 12. Uh, um, oh, uh, oh, oh, upper house, house ticket. ticket. Yeah. Oh yeah, we got uh, what's his name again? Just come over, Jeremy. Jeremy. Yeah, Jeremy just came over from another major party, so um, he's now with us. And um, the thing is, it's sort of just because we dress a little bit differently. Yes, why why we dress differently is we're trying to get into your head all those images you see in the background that are playing in the background like the support PBS, the old medicines. The old medicine bottles are there to show you that this has been around for a very long time. Um, this dates back to the um, Holy Temple of David, David's Temple. Uh, we spoke about that when we were uh, no sound, but practicing. And a lot of people don't realize, a lot of Christians do not realize that without cannabis, you cannot make holy oil. In, in the recipe, it's called calamus. It's called calamus in the recipe. And, um, but that's what they called it. But it was also once called manna because there's no other plant on this planet that God would have given the Israelites that one, you can eat from it, you can build from it, you can medicate from it, you can clothe from it. So what else do you think God gave 
people that were stuck in the desert for 40 years. And like they talk about that monochromic gold that all the people that um, made for the Egyptians and everything. Do you know what that was? That was from the cannabis plant. It sort of, they turned it into different things and the pollens from it and everything could have been used and they were used and this is the thing. There is so much evidence. You look at um, Egypt, I think it was 12,000 years is the longest one for Egypt, is it? No. 12,000 years. Oh, I only knew in all that sort of, yeah. Um, so oh, you've never done that research, yeah. Well, from what I found out personally, it actually dates back hundreds of thousands of years. It's even been found in, uh, yeah, it's been found in uh, cavemen places and stuff like that. Um, I think Lucy, that lady Lucy, there was cannabis found in that cave. Um, but David's temple, now that's the cave. This is for all the Christians. David's temple, seriously, where they found where the holy oil was made. There was just as much resin, um, re remnants and resin of cannabis in that stone as there was oil. So hence prove that it, calamus was cannabis. Um, but see, the, the Mexican name of it was used for many, many years when that showed the reaper madness and um, came out and everything like that, to where they're saying you're jumping out of windows and shit like that. That's bullshit. People on, I guarantee you, somebody on um, cannabis is not going to go suicidal. They're sitting there going, yeah, I, like, I'm actually relaxed for once. I'm having a good time. And you're not doing any, half the time you're not doing any, okay? You're just having a good time. Yeah. Because you're relaxed yeah. and everything. But, see, the stigma that that reef of madness has caused is actually the problem we've got at the moment. We can't get the volunteers because they're all too scared. They're too scared to come and help. They're too scared because, oh, people are going to find out I smoke cannabis. Well, guess what? They already know. The same way the police know. How do you think the police know to test a person when they're driving? They smell it on your breath. They smell it in your clothes, trust me. I can pick a cannabis smoker a mile away. And so I, like I quite often, get, I'm walking through Woolies, even while the pandemic was on and I had a mask on, I'd walk past somebody and you just know, any, any cannabis smoker will tell you, like, yep, he smoked, he smoked, he smoked, he smoked, he smoked. And you just look at each other and go, yeah. And, um, or you look at the eyes. And so there's many ways to tell that somebody smokes. So hiding it is useless. So why are you hiding? Why aren't you coming and helping? Because all of you are out there saying, oh, I wish they'd legalize it. I really do. I really wish they'd legalize this. It needs to be legalized. Yeah, it does. Well, what the fuck are you doing? Why aren't you helping us? If you think it should be legal, come and fucking help us. Because people like Michael, the girls that, um, some of the girls that are on the show, they're going to be on the shows over the next few days. They are working their backsides off. The lady that I'm helping out in the Newcastle booth with the Newcastle booths, right, is so flat out. Like she's running up and down the state, getting posters and everything for everybody, and they're constant on the move. Some of us are using our own money. Like today, I used half a tank of juice running around finding exactly where these booths were. Like, I'm only looking after four booths, but I found out one booth, we can put uh, posters here. We found out another booth, we can do this. Another place, yeah, I'm still trying to work out where the hell I'm going to put the posters, because there's nowhere to put them. And um, then trying to find out exactly where I can put them on the other joint. And then I got sent on a wild goose chase by Google, and uh, wound up going all over, went on a 10K drive. But yeah, I wear that because I want to get this legal. Now, the thing is, guys, I don't have to worry about a single person out there. I don't have to worry about any of you. This is why I don't have to worry about a single one of you. It's because of this. I have my scripts. Well, you can even hear a tiny little bit in there with me. Um, the, what do you call those little pads that keep it dry? Whatever they call these things. Those things. 
that sort of in with a couple of those and they make and keep it dry and healthy for me and everything like that. That's my emer like real definite emergency if I'm in agony. Uh, like I'm not touching that unless I'm in absolute bloody pain. Um, and everything because I'm waiting on my other med to turn up and everything might, might I now could wait until the end of the election before it bloody turns up and um, just typical supply problems and shit like that and um, but this is the life of a person that has to turn around and go around and they try and do their best to help people out like I've been lobbying the government for well over 10 years in regard to cannabis I'm well known to most politicians um, I'm well known to their staff even. Uh, some of the staff even call me by my name. I say, oh, it's, hi, it's Anthony, the cannabis rate. G'day, Anthony, how you going? And everything like that. I'm always nice to them, so yeah, they're always nice to me. And if, if you ever do become a lobbyist and you start lobbying the government over cannabis or any other subject, always be nice to the underlings. They're the ones that give your message to the ministers. So always be nice. You be nice to them, they'll look after you like gold, but you're aggro, aggro with them. Mate, they're going to hang up on you and you have to say, fuck you, you're never going to get anywhere. But if you're nice to them, like anywhere else, if you're nice to somebody, man, you will get so much help from them and everything like that. I've had meetings with ministers over the years. I protested around, I'd help Parliament House to ransom with an ice cream truck. Um, really did. When the shearers, back in the day of the shearers, you remember the big shearer protest? Uh, I was that guy driving the ice cream truck around Parliament House. That was me. I was protesting over something that happened. I was on the dole. I'd built a truck and then the council wouldn't give me a freaking licence. So I tried state government. I tried everywhere. And I ended up going to federal. And, I, and the shearers just happened to be there. They fed me everything. Mate, they were great guys. It's sort of I had brilliant three days. But every time they tried to do a press interview, I'm driving around that little loop in their driveways. Just Valderie, Valdera, Valderie, da 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 green sleeves. Just going non stop. They couldn't do a press <laughs> interview. They did not have the ability to do a press interview. And that actually got me the meeting with the person that I needed to see. This is why, actually, I'm the reason why you can't make loud noises around Parliament House anymore. But I've done other things. I've changed laws in Parliament. And one person can make a bloody difference. Like, because of me. And it was because of me. I know it was because I wrote all the bloody letters. Um, because back in the day, we used to get one loan of $500 a year. Uh, well, last night, I actually said two, but I, that was a mistake. But we, uh, we got one loan. And then we had to wait exactly 12 months before we could reapply. But they added 10 days every time. And so you had to wait that extra 10 days. So if you were registering your car with it, like most of us were, like I was... Um, I had to wait at one stage when I started writing these letters what my car was two and a half months almost needing a blue slip and I said no nah, that's it and for two weeks I wrote to every minister in the government just a simple letter one letter send it to everybody it took me about five minutes to write the letter it took me about 20 minutes to make sure I got all the emails right send it to every minister Two weeks later, I get a letter back saying, Mr. Avery, we'd like to inform you that now you can go and get two loans a year for $1,000 each loan. Uh, they must be paid off before the thing. We take the money automatically. And everybody knows how they do it. And uh, yeah, I did that just through one letter to every minister. I sort of helped get rid of somebody in Parliament once before. And I went through all that last night. I'm not going to go through it again. But the thing is, it's sort of one man can make a difference. Can you imagine what every cannabis smoker in this country could do if we stand up? We're not doing a protest. This is not a protest. You won't get arrested. All we, all we want is we need people at the booze with tickets in their hands doing this. Yes, sir. like, hi, or just you can talk to them. Like, my, my spiel is, hi, how you going? I'm Tony. Would you like a ticket? I always offer my hand first. That's my trick. I offer my hand. Because someone offers your hand, the first reaction, you're going to shake it. And um, it's sort of... But some people, they just like to hand out the tickets, go like that. And it doesn't matter. As long as you get that ticket in the hands. And one good thing about our tickets, because of our subject is controversial, they are actually going to take more notice of that one ticket than anything else. Because they're looking at a controversial ticket. They're looking at a controversial subject. And this is the first time in many, many years 
that we have enough candidates, especially in one state. There's enough candidates. If we, I think actually it's either 12 or 13. And if any of you guys out there watching can put a comment into the chat, and I know I haven't had the chat up, I forgot to get it back up. If any of you know exactly the number of candidates we actually have in the election, can you please throw it into the chat? And uh, Mr. Stipple is, Stipple is back. Um, uh, Greg's in there. G'day, Greg. How are you, mate? Um, I used to work with Greg up in the nightclub. And uh, he was a bar manager. I was the promo manager, and I worked my way to the top. Uh, Greg worked his way up the uh, a good job in the club and we work our backsides off in this club same same as what I'm doing now working my backside off doing what I do and this is what I do and that's what I used to do and um, the thing is but I never was able to do that without help if I did a massive party Greg will tell you like all the staff had to help whether they liked it or not well they were paid so they had no choice but the thing is this is something where we don't have paid employees we don't can't afford to pay people like we're running on donations and a lot of it's coming out of our own pockets some of some people like me I donated petrol today but that was to get me and do the job I needed to do and that's how we're surviving at the moment and we are just a grounds roots organization and a lot of so many people are scared of joining everybody says oh no well I better vote labor in because this is going to come in or I better vote labor liberal in what are they fucking doing for you they lie, fucking cheat. I've never seen one of them carry out a promise except Gough Whitlam. Gough Whitlam was the only one I ever saw carry out a promise. And yeah, I'm that old, 61. And I was only a kid, but I saw Gough Whitlam carry out so many bloody promises that was beyond a day. That's why they got rid of him, because he was doing something. And they didn't like that. And we need to do that. And this is the first year we really can, as a political party, and yes, we are a political party, we have a chance to kick people out that have anti-cannabis laws. And there are, do you know, there are more cannabis smokers on this planet than there are non-cannabis smokers. There are more ex-cannabis smokers than there are more non cannabis smokers than if anything people that believe take the number up and there's more than nine to, there's total more of 90 percent i can tell you now 99 percent of my personal friends i will i can't say where the other group is but yeah all of them smoke all of them. and the thing is it's sort of I grew up with cannabis. I know that it doesn't cause harm. I know that after you take all those THCs out, and to take it out, all you've got to do, you put your flour, you take this, you get that. You could actually make it in that. You could actually make cannabis oil in this. You just get, you open it up. You'd pour your alcohol into the bloody flour. I'm oh, sorry, yeah, I'm not going to open that. you pour your your stuff into the flour, shake it up, and you've got rid of all, every bloody ounce of THC. Every ounce of THC. Um, am I keeping you up, mate? Am I? You, if you need to, at any time, mate, if you need to go, let me know. Um, and, and, yeah, but the thing is, I really did. I, from the age of seven, I truly did help my mum in the kitchen. I used to pour the cannabis out. I'd measure it out and everything. That was my job. I got to measure up and everything like that. And um, But I, what I was measuring up, though, was actually processed. It had had every ounce of THC removed from it. I have since later found out there may have been a slight amount, very slight amount. But by removing the, um, the THC out of it, virtually makes it non-psychoactive because all the psychoactives have been carried into the alcohol. You then burn off the alcohol. You then get what they call hash oil. Hash oil is then mixed with, um, you can mix that with vape oil. Um, that's pretty much a basic version of um, hash oil uh, that I made myself out of my own flour that was medicated to me and um, much smoother than going just the normal hash oil away. But there's many ways to protest, protest this drug. 
you can actually simply just get all your leaf and your flower. You can throw your leaf. All you got to do with your leaf, and the people that throw leaf away are idiots, by the way. And this is to every cannabis smoker out there. Do not throw your leaf away. If you do actually grow illegally, don't fucking throw it away. Get it, dry it, put it in a blender, grind it up into a fucking fine powder. After you've got it in a fine powder, all you do, two tablespoons into your food. That's enough to get six people pain relief. Serious. If you put it into a meal for six people, those two tablespoons of that leaf because you haven't taken the THC out of it, you haven't processed it. So what you're actually doing, but by chopping it up, you're actually processing it down to where there is THC in the leaf that a lot of people don't know about. But the only way to get it is you've got to dry it and grind it. And that's the only way. And then you've got to cook it the same way. You've got to burn cannabis to get the THC to a certain level, 120 degrees. Most cooking is done over 120 degrees. So yeah, you're cooking out and boiling out the tiny little remnants. So, yeah, don't throw away that leaf. Oh, you're idiots if you do. And you can actually get just as much out of that. You just have to use more of leaf than you would have. Like, if that was uh, flour, you might use uh, six people, most probably about that much. A bud that size would get six people going um, for about the same period of time of two tablespoons of leaf. But if you don't process it right, yeah, you can't do anything with it. So you process something and do it right, you'll actually have the th um, everything right. To make cannabis oil, um, the stuff that comes in there, I won't show you the script um, because it's got all my name and everything on the other side of it. Uh, that cost me, uh, shit, that one. Yeah, that cost me yeah, a lot of money. That was a $300 bottle, that one. That's a 60 mil bottle, that sort of, yeah, expensive as shit. But my name's plaked on it, so I'm not going to turn it around. But um, that oil there looked after me and healed me and everything like that. But the stigma from the reefer madness, this is what's caused yeah, yeah. our bloody problems. And they don't realise it, mate. It's sort of like, but going back to, I asked you, I know I asked you this once before when we were, yeah, accidentally practicing accidentally. Um, I know I asked you this, like how many times a day, or how many times a week would you hear people come up and say, cannabis should be legal? How many people yeah. do you know that say this? Well, if it's not that, it's going to be, they'd say it's going to be legal soon. You know, it's, um, yeah, that's well, all, all I hear is, oh, it's going to be legal soon. Like, you know, um, but, yeah, we need people to get out and help um, make it happen, you know. Look at uh, Western Australia. Uh, look at uh, Victoria uh, making a change with the driving laws, you know. They, that only happened six months ago. That, well, well, not even that long ago, was it? But they were voted in, um, you know, and they're already down there and making, uh, making changes positive change I'm, I'm actually still trying to rever research that I actually only found out about that uh, uh, about three days ago I think because I've been in that hospital since Christmas so um, yeah I've sort of been a bit out of touch so I only just recently heard about that and I'm trying to do a bit of research into that myself but see some governments are waking up but there's a bigger problem here and this is the problem and this is why I need every cannabis smoker in this country every cannabis smoker if you aren't in this state or anything but near the state please enter the state and come and volunteer at one of our booths on election day we need people at the booths for a reason because if we don't get that out there because I know I'll help everybody that I can to get this on and made recreational because it does not do all that shit it shows in Reef of Madness I've taken two doses of it just as normal as anybody else there's no difference the only difference is i don't have any bloody pain i don't have an ounce of pain at the moment because i took my medicine took my meds and that worked i'm still sane i'm still habitable i could still do fine motor skills like making a paper airplane out of a bloody 
thing and um, yeah it's it's easy to do it doesn't take much to actually do something and this is how this is the test that it should be oh, what keeps on going on with that screen this is a test they should do a fine motor skill because you know like if you're two stone like you know for a fact if you're if you're wrecked and you've had the maximum dose you can't do shit and this is what they don't realize because when we're wrecked we're not we know we're not dumb 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 enough to go and drive because we know we're fucking wrecked but what you call wrecked and what i call wrecked i call wrecked pain free absolutely pain free and so it's just a matter of, like i know that's a shitty airplane but i'm not concentrating on it too much but see that's the sort of test that they should be doing is a fine motor skill test like a jigsaw puzzle and they like i've got these puzzles that are real easy dead easy like anybody can work them out in two seconds but i love getting people that are stoned to try it it really is a, such a basic puzzle but it stumps everybody that has just had a smoke I can never get them to do it. And they've tried and tried and tried. And it's not until they settle down two hours later that they, oh, fuck. That's their first words. They've realised how easy that puzzle was. But it's things like that that they should be testing. Not bloody, oh, he's got cannabis in his system. Cannabis can stay in your system for a reason. Because we have a cannabinoid system. We have it. God gave it to us. That's what I mean. That's, I think, why he gave it to the Israelites. Because why else would he give something that we didn't need? And it was only when this was prohibited that all these, like, epilepsy cases started coming back. All the other things started coming back. All these other illnesses started popping. AAHD, all these. Why? Because we're not getting something that we should be consuming. And I mean, we should be consuming it. Um, and and e- eating it so what about did you know have you actually eaten it yet have you eaten it yet uh no uh, no uh, not not uh not raw but um yeah oh, I, no, I, eat the, but, oh, I don't eat flowers raw right? but leaves yeah I'll eat them I'll eat them as a salad um yeah but the thing is it's sort of you, you should try it, and I recommend it to everybody. If you're medically legal, get a bit of your flour, crush it up, cook it, cook it in your food, make sure your kids aren't eating it, and um, I guarantee you, your, your pain relief will last much longer, a hell of a lot longer. Your um, headiness, still two hours. Never changes. Never, ever bloody changes. Because the psychoactive part of THC only lasts for two hours. It's just the way it works. And I've never known anybody. How many people have got to go back and have another smoke two hours later? Everybody's got to have another smoke two hours later. If you're just <laughs> um, why? Because it's worn off. It has worn off. So you've got to go back and have a smoke. Those that take oil, yeah, yeah. we still need that smoke to get us through until the oil kicks in because the oil does take time to go through your system. Once it's in your system, it still only has two-hour head effect. And um, I've never met anybody that says it lasts longer. Never. And I've been... And surprise, using, really? Yeah, never. Surprise, not one surprise, surprise, because, surprise, uh, because uh, uh, with the seizures, the oil, the oil works, works straight, straight away, away, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, as as like for seizures. Seizure. Sorry, which for what? Uh, all, uh, for seizures? Oh, like, seizures. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, because it's another component. Yeah, yeah. yeah because it works straight away. Like, um, yeah. stops it, yeah. yeah. Um, but CBD is different down. than THC. So it's got a different yep. purpose. Yep. Yeah. And see, they're, they're what, we've got CBN. Uh, T, uh, what is it? TCA? Is it TCA? TCA. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's so many different ones but to get THC you've got to turn T, uh, TCH or whatever it is TCA into THC and you've got to process it at 120 degrees minimum all your vapes are set at 120 degrees minimum to actually get your vape coming out at 
the right temperature to get the THC out of the plant. And um, so there's yeah, different yeah. there's different ways you can consume this plant. There are so and as I said, just look at the back of the video. This is how they did it back in the twenties. There and you can see it. It's clearly marked, sold over the counter, and it was once called hemp and cannabis. It had both names back in those days, but hemp was the the CBD plant. Cannabis was the um, the psychoactive plant. But when what happened is the paper industry, the oil industry, the timber industry saw that it was destroying them because when, especially when they worked out, they could make plastic from the plant. That caused the biggest stall. And it was the oil companies because one of those oil companies owners, guess what he did for a job? He just happened to be in government. So he didn't want it. He was able to push it. They called it marijuana. See, because all of a sudden, every hemp farmer all over the world was not allowed to grow hemp because of this one little video where they've turned around and they've changed the thing and they've made it. I'm just going to play the, a little bit more of that. Marijuana video. addict. Plank Hopeless insanity. Plank film now now the only thing is do you know the only people that and like you you've got to agree with me on this the only people that act like that in reefer madness are kids that like well yeah i call kids 18 year olds 19 year olds that have just got into it and they think that's the way you've got to act because they've all seen reefer madness oh they'll think we're not cool if we don't <laughs> act like this so they act stupid <laughs> when, when they're in reality they're, they're thinking this thing hasn't hit me yet when is it going to work but they're acting like idiots because they were trained to act like idiots because of those movies and because of those uh, movies it gave the thing and all the kids that thought they were cool because they acted like the, the people in Reef and Madison in about 9 minutes the teams might drop out I'll have to quickly uh, I'll continue talking but I'll quickly send you a new link if you want to stay on. Um, so don't worry about it because the yeah. three hour period is coming up. But um, with all the dramas, yeah, I should have said it for longer. I might set it for longer, longer next time, just in case. But um, it was because of the reefer madness. These kids act like idiots deliberately because they think that if they don't, they're not going to be cool. So that's where that stigma comes from. But then you got the stigma of the drug itself because you're taught to believe that this is the devil's drug because the church got involved as well. The church still calls it the devil's drug and yet they don't even realise without it they cannot get proper holy water, which is stupid. It's sort of the one thing that the church should be backing is this plant and uh, they don't do it. And... You've just got to look at everybody that turns around and says that, eh, oh, I don't want to do this. Everybody's, what did you say after it? Uh, like, as, like I said, you said something before and I thought, I never thought of that. I, I didn't tell you that. But after I said, how many people did, you, like, ever, has ever said to you, um, like, that it should be legalised and you come up and you said something else. What was that you said again? Remember? <laughs> oh, I just said, uh, um... Yeah, yeah, I did. It's, it's going to be legalised soon. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, you know, uh, it's going to be legalised soon. That's right. You know, um, like, yeah, and no, uh, it's not. If we leave it to the government, they won't, you know, we've got alcohol, um, tobacco, big oil, big coal, big pharma, um, cotton, um, timber industry. Everything, every lobbyist all paying the government not to legalise. Yeah. Uh, it's only going to be people power that changes it. Yeah, and it is. That's very true. That's very true. But it's not in protest. Protests, yeah, we'll get seen. But protesting doesn't work. And I think our party realised this quite a few years ago. And that's when they started getting organised because protests don't really work. 
us yelling and screaming, it should be, it should be, yeah. Trust me, we stand a better chance standing at a voting booth, giving people a leaflet, because the only way to change a law is to be inside government. You can't change. You can help by lobbying, which I've tried, but this is such a controversial subject where they don't really want it, so they take their time at doing it, and that's the problem. And we're never going to get it legalised. And if you keep on saying it should be legalised, it should be legalised, you're a friggin' idiot. If you can't get off your backsides, for, even if you only come along for one day, one day, come along for one day. Come along for two if you can, because we've got two days. We've got the early, the early Saturday and we've got the, the actual election day. And we need these booths filled. We need people at every booth because it was the people at every booth that helped us go from, God, I think we were under 1% the election before, wasn't it? Well, I think we were under, yeah. it, was a low, it was a low percentage, but it, bang, we went to 3%. And the reason we went to 3% was the simple fact that myself, other people went out and manned booths. But the thing is, there's not enough of us. We only manned a certain amount of booths. All right, but the thing is, we have more than twelve. I think I think it's I think it's fourteen, maybe fifteen, candidates for this state. Those that amount of candidates, if we can put them into power, we can change the law. And I mean, we can change the law because that's enough of us to sway every vote in that room. Fifteen people can make a major difference in a room of politics. They can be the decider yeah, yeah. of something not being decided because at the moment there are so many, there's so many people saying yes, so many people saying no, it should be, so many people saying no, it shouldn't be. We need more people in there that need it done, big people that want it done and people that know it deserves to be done. And like even in the chemists now, they like you can go to the chemist and you can buy cannabis. And I, you really can. I go to pick the cannabis that comes from a chemist that comes from a chemist and mm -mm. okay for that to happen it took many years i've got to remember this was recommended for legalization for both in 2006 the uptake of it started two years ago was it was it two years ago the rule uptake of people realizing that we could get it and everything yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the problem was getting a bloody doctor which i know you've gone through unfortunately and i do you know, i do hope that you can sort that out as i said i gave you that information and i hope you take uh, take that up uh, we're about three minutes away to the possible shutdown um with teams but the stream will go on i will send you a new link if, only if you want to come back in. what was that i might, I might say, say good, good night, night mate oh, and, no um, worries. yeah but um I'll oh, stay until it shuts down anyhow. So the stream's not going to shut down, folks. Uh, it'll just be me going on about it again. But um, unfortunately, we have had major issues with the streaming tonight, and that's because of all the platform issues that we went through that were trying to take over control of the microphone, which did take control of the microphone, caused us to, a sound issue. And um, But the point is, like, if we don't get this legalised, it's going to be the same thing. And guess what? Those of you out there that are recreational, if Liberal gets their way, you are going to be at a much greater risk of being arrested. Much greater risk. Bigger penalties. That's what Liberal wants. One, 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 one nation and want one, one, the penalties too. Yeah, yeah. And it's ridiculous. It's sort of, we should be lowering it. We should be opening prison doors. And we really should. Yeah, every yeah. cannabis, every person in there for cannabis related, unless they've committed a violent crime along with it. But if they've only yeah, committed yeah. the cannabis crime, they should be released from bloody jail. They really have to be released from jail. And I reckon they should even be compensated for what was done to them because they shouldn't have been imprisoned in the first place. Why imprison somebody for something that is healing? Why imprison something for something that cures things? And it cures things. It's healed my liver. It's healed my kidneys. I was, my liver was so bad. And it's healed them. 
and there was no other drug involved. And I have even turned my new doctor into a believer that cannabis is good for you. Um, before, I went in there, like big sign, typical doctor surgery. This surgery does not prescribe dry, uh, dangerous drugs. And, um, but over the period of time, over the last two, three months, they have seen me go from where they were worried about all these problems and telling me that I've got to start looking after them, I need to start losing weight. And the only real change was cannabis because I could finally afford to get enough scripts to get me through a withdrawal period where I could also lower my dose and everything. Like on my um, Panadine Fort, dude, I lowered them all the way down to two. And uh, at one stage at Christmas for five days, I didn't even take them for five days. But as soon as it, the script ran out, yeah, bang, I'm back on the bastards. But and they're growing uh, because those drugs have got this problem that when you're used to them, you need more and you need more and you need more and you need more. Same with illegal drugs, you need more, you need more. It didn't shut down. Wow, that's good. Um, and um, the thing is, without these uh, things and everything that as people are going through, um, we wouldn't know what this drug does. But there's enough of us out there that are medically legal now that can physically prove this drug is not dangerous. This drug has healing properties, properties this drug is very relaxing. This drug should be legal. It does not cause paranoia. The, fear, the, the paranoia is one thing and one thing only. And that's the fear of being arrested, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The, I, I bet you 10 to 1, if you went out and bought, a, bought an ounce or something, you'd be, fuck, are the police earning around or whatever? Uh, how do I get it home? Uh, everything like yeah. that. I can go to the chemist, mate, I can stick that in my fucking top pocket like that. And I can drive home, I can sit there and stop and talk to a copper. As long as I hadn't used it, he can't do yeah, shit about yeah. it. Because I'm medically legal. And that's what we need everybody to be legal. And that's what it is. It should be decriminalised. Everybody should be allowed to grow two plants. Medical patients should be allowed to grow four because you've got to keep your medicine up growing and a lot of the time plants fail it is an easy tree to grow but from what i remember what my mother went through it's like plants used to die all the damn time and like there's what we call gluts in the market where you can't even get illegal stuff because it's been a bad winter or like no one's had any crops in and you weren't able to get it i went through some year, I think one year, I couldn't get it for nearly 18 months. I couldn't get a single drop. No one had any. No one. Either everyone was arrested or it just had, the supply had just dried, dried up, well and truly dried up. And um, that's the thing with it. It's sort of, if you turn around and you ask yourself about this, it's worth protecting and it's worth getting out there. But it's never going to get legalised, guys, if you don't get off your asses. And um, that truly is the thing. And sort of, we need everybody to help. Not, not just to help, but to vote. Vote above the line in the column zero. Put your vote there for the legalised cannabis party up in the, above the line. In the, it's the zero column, isn't it? I think, yeah, the zero column. And um, yeah. It's, and it's up to you how you place your vote. We can't tell you how to place your vote. We can tell you how to do a vote for us, which is put it in the zero column above the line and um, for us. And that way, it's got, we've got a chance of getting everybody in. But we, we don't get them into power, guys. It's just going to be the same ongoing. Liberal gets in, expect bigger, heftier fines. Expect to be arrested. Um, because, yeah, and as um, Michael just said, One Nation wants even tougher. So if either one of those two parties get in, then you're a smoker, you're going to be more paranoid, you're going to be more in fear of being arrested, you're going to have to go through so many dramas that you shouldn't need to go through. And yet we are the, now the only country, or one of the very few countries, there's only a few countries now that where it's not legal, yet we go to Canberra, anyone in Canberra can grow two plants. Anyone, a politician, a politician's child can grow two plants. 
And um, why can one state where all the politicians live grow it, but we can't? Why is it legal for them, but not for everybody else? Oh, because the same federal government that is not fighting the so-called federal state government down there, they're not fighting it at all. Why? Because they don't want their kids being arrested because they know their kids smoke. As, as I said, 90% of the population bloody smokes. And that doesn't mean just this country, that's every country. Some other countries, it's 100% of the population bloody use. Uh, virtually America, and yet no crime change. And crime, there. crime didn't go up when they legalised it. Crime has gone down in America. Yeah, they've still got their bloody shootings and everything. Of course they're going to have shootings. They've got guns everywhere and everything. I'm not into gun control. I'm an ex-shooter myself. Um, guns are good if you use them for the right purpose, like go hunting, kill a pig, come home and eat it. Um, but the thing is, it's sort of... Cannabis, yeah, 100% legal in, my, in most states in the United States. Thailand, the one country where you would normally go to jail for a long, long time. There's a, I think it was called Midnight, Midnight Express. That was all about Thailand. I think it was Thailand. Um, where the guy who did went to jail in Thailand. And a big story. You should watch Midnight Express anyhow. It'll give you an idea of what it used to be like over there. And uh, yet now they can walk down the street, walk into the local market, and buy plants grown, grown plants, seedlings, straight up off the off the people. They just walk up, take the shopping bag, walk away with a, a live plant in their hand, just wandering down the street to go home and plant it. Yeah. Canada. Legal. <laughs> Legal in Canada. You just can't take American cannabis into in the in the um they still in I've seen so many videos where the Americans have got their cannabis in their thing think it's okay to take it in. Get always get in trouble, so you just can't take it across the border. But so many countries now are legalizing cannabis, and it really, really, truly is bad that they can smoke, Canberra's can grow it, yet the rest of this country can't. It's got to change. But the only way it's going to change, guys and girls, if you get off your big fat keisters, and I really mean it, get off your keister, give us a ring, and volunteer one day out of your life because if we can get these politicians in and also vote for them if we can get these politicians in we will have enough people there to make the change that is needed this prohibition has gone on too long but it's going to keep on going on if you don't stand up because we need everybody to stand up like one person can make a difference every cannabis smoker wow You've only got to look at some of the protests and those protests have been just the loyal ones that have gone to those protests. And yet the rest of you stayed at home. You didn't want to go to the protests. Yeah, you were too stoned. But now, if Liberal gets in or One Nation, you're up for much tougher drug laws. Risk, you're at risk of getting arrested. Now's the time, and this is the one election for New South Wales, that the chance is there for you to save yourself from going to jail if, you, if you're out there growing it. It's sort of, if you grow it at the moment, yeah, you're putting yourself at risk. If you're not medically legal and you're, um, ne and you're eligible, you should be going and getting legal. Otherwise, you're at fear of being arrested. And I'm saying fear of being arrested because that's what the paranoia really is. So those of you out there that uh, want it changed and everything, do you, do you want to go, Michael? Like, you're welcome to go if you want. It sort of, oh, um, man, um, yeah, yeah. I'd just, I'd just like, like to say, to say mate, it, just um, um, yeah, yeah, the, the people, people elect the government, the government they deserve, they deserve it, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. like, you yeah. know, we need to get out, yeah, yeah. elect yeah. the elect government the, that's going to do what we want, yeah. you know. Ah, oh, for sure, mate. For uh, sure. Uh, but, me on, Anthony. Um, no, mate, you're welcome, mate. Oh, thanks, thanks for coming on. I'm so sorry for all the problems we had. I really am. So sorry, mate. But we're going to have to get together. I'm going to have to have a beer. Just have, sit down and have a yarn. Yeah, sort of have a yarn after the election, though. Um, yeah. After taking over Karen, I'm trying to work out how I'm going to do everything now. But, um, <laughs> yeah, after, after the election, mate, for sure. We'll sit down and we'll have a beer. 
and have a good laugh about all the shit that we've gone through with the election. And hopefully we can get a few more volunteers. But I'm going to keep on streaming until I can get some. Uh, I'm going to talk to my normal subs because I can see one or two of them on there and I'm apologising for losing them on the screen when I've just tapped the screen and did something with you. Um, yep. So, uh, but yeah, those of you out there that um, do want it legalised, you've got to help. But thank you. This is, and by the way, everybody, Michael's name is Michael Kill Murray. Sorry, sorry, mate. It's, sort of, it's going to take a while to stick. Um, and um, yeah, we have had those dramas, and I do apologise for that, folks. But we can we can change everything. We really, truly can, folks. That we can change anything. But it's up to you and everything like that. So. Those of you out there that want this changed and everything like that, get off your butts and help us. So I'm going to say goodnight to Michael and I'm going to give you all a roasting. So um, I hope you watch the rest of the stream anyhow, Michael. Thanks for coming on, mate. Very much appreciated, mate. Very much appreciated. And, uh, and uh, don't forget the vote, 25th. Yeah, oh, and all the eight, yeah, all the, eight, the early vote. Yeah, you've got a week. Only a week. Only a week. Yep. Yeah. Hey, hey. Oh, we're above the line. Yeah. All right, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. And um, I'll catch up to you later, dude. Okay. Thank you very much, Michael, for coming along. And uh, I do apologize for everybody that came in when the stream was going nuts. Um, I do have to apologize because it was a bit of a nightmare. Uh, we were streaming. Uh, we didn't know that we were without sound. And unfortunately, it does happen with... Um, yeah, everything goes on with bloody YouTube a lot of the time. And we can't do anything about it when it happens until someone actually tells us. So when someone actually does tell us that something is actually happening, um, the thing is we've got to turn around and do our best to actually um, make everything happen and um, sort of do it. But if we don't get out there and stand up everybody, uh, sorry, I'm just looking and trying to do something, folks. So the screen's a bit iffy at the moment. But um, it's us, the people, that can make a change. And unless we get up and do something about it, it's ridiculous. It's sort of because How's it going to happen if we don't ourselves do something? And it can't just be the like the people that are out here now. It's, we need everybody. We need every cannabis smoker, every person that believes it should be legal. Please come and help in some way, shape or form. But make sure you vote Legalised Cannabis Party in the, in the zero column above the line and um, make sure you vote. It's, uh, it's up to you. We can't force you to vote for us. But if you want cannabis legalised, yeah, you need us in that position. You need to help us get those people in. So I'm asking everybody, I don't care where you come from. If you, even, you don't even have to be a member of the party. As long as you support us, yeah, you're quite welcome to come along and volunteer to help us hand out tickets. The more people, the merrier. The more booze man, the more chance we've got of getting in. Because it was only the very few booze that were man that actually the, the stats went up. And because we, we did man a few, quite a few uh, booze, but the thing is, we didn't man enough. We didn't have enough people. And that's where you come in. You are the ones out there that will make the difference. You are the people that will change the election. And the only way that can get changed is that we've got to get these people into power. So if you are a cannabis smoker, if you are a cannabis user in any way, shape or form, medical, recreational, um, especially if you're not medically legal, please be aware, liberal want tougher penalties. One nation, tougher penalties. There should be no penalties. So if you don't stand up, there's a chance that they could get it. And if they get it, use a screw. They could even re-screw us that are on the medical cannabis. 
and um, it took us years to get the medical cannabis to a stage where we can just walk into a chemist and with our script and say, look, we need this. Fair enough, we've got to wait a couple of days, sometimes a little bit longer to get the medicine in because it's got to come from the, the cannabis plantations and warehouses around the country. And um, so it takes time. But if you're, if you're out there and you think that it's just going to be us few that make the difference, there's not enough of us. That's the problem. That's why we haven't got as big as we need to be. Because uh, all the people out there that say, oh, well, it should be legal. Yeah, mate, it should be legal. Don't know why it's not legal. Yeah, mate, it's got me. They said it should be legal. In 2006, TGA said it should be legal. Why haven't they legalised it? Why? Because you haven't yeah, stood up. That's why it's not legal. Because you haven't got off your ass thinking that, okay, those blokes will fix it, those blokes will do it. Yeah, Bluebeard, he pro he down at Canberra, he's always harassed from Canberra about it, sending them letters and things like that. That gets so far. That's it. It goes so far. I can change little things. And occasionally I have a big score. But it's sort of, you've got to realise that it's the people that really make the laws. You make the law. You do. That's what you've got to realise. It is you that makes the law. So if you want cannabis legalised, one, straight up, vote the Legalise Cannabis Party. Full stop. Stop saying it should be legalised. Because if you're not going to get off your ass and one vote for a party, and yeah, I'm getting tough now because I can, because I'm on my own and everything, but that's me. This is my opinion. I had people ringing me up afterwards asking me why I'm not running. Well, yeah, I'm sick. It's too late anyhow. I couldn't run this election. I did even check for years. So the, those that rang me last night and asked me that question, the reason why I'm not running is because I didn't get in in time. And I, at that time when I had the chance to get in, I was ill. So yeah, that's why I didn't think about it then. Yeah, I'm, think, I'm actually thinking about it. I am actually really thinking about, okay, if there's a by-election, I could always run. If there was a, if someone got sick, one of our party got sick, and then we got to replace it, so we have a by-election. And um, anybody that knows me and everything like that, sorry, Greg, I haven't, um, I've lost the chat again. Um, I, it keeps on popping off the bloody screen. Oh, where is it? No, I've actually lost it. What the hell's, where the hell's the chat going? But um, I do apologise, Greg. I know you're there and I bet you 10 to 1 someone else is there. And... Um, so I do apologise for those of you that were in the chat and um, didn't, yeah, you got a bit ignored. And I do apologise for that, folks. <laughs> I've had a funny, funny night. As I said, we streamed for over an hour. And we really did. Didn't know that we didn't have sound. And it was only from one of my regulars popping in and said, Bluebeard, you don't have any sound. This is after we'd streamed for an hour. So we got to practice and everything so we used up a bit of our time I booked the teams meeting for three hours and um, didn't know that it could actually go over on teams I know on other platforms you're not allowed to go over if you set a time that's it that's the end of your stream so those of you out there and uh, that want it legalized look there's no law that says even if you work for another party even if you are a member of another party and you really want cannabis legalised the only way this is going to get legalised is if you the people turn around and make it get legalised and the only way to do it is stand up vote one two we need help at those same booths just handing out some tickets. Just giving people a piece of paper. That's all you've got to do. If you don't want to talk, you don't have to. Trust me, if you've got a chance to tell your story about cannabis, you should tell it. Because every one of us has a story. But when at the election booth, you've got 30 seconds and you can only tell them if they talk to you. So there's why I always introduce myself because I always say, hi, how are you? 
I always make sure that that person knows and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over there so that um, I'm not looking away from the screen all the time and um, the thing is with it that um, if we don't do it folks and if we don't get it legalised the, the risk of jail for people could be longer the risk of time in jail no, sorry, could be longer the risk of being arrested could be greater because as I said liberal want tougher laws one nation want tougher laws. Why in the hell do we need tougher laws on something that doesn't hurt people? And if you don't believe me that um, when I've numerous times I've said, oh, g'day, mate, yeah, um, that I've said to numerous people that the drug cannot hurt you. And there's a video out there on, it's, the, it's called nugsmasher.com. They've got a YouTube channel. And on their, they've got a video that says the, the highest THC oil they've ever made. And what they did, they boiled up all the pucks of the, the nugs and everything that they squashed and everything. And then they processed them one, two more times and everything. And they got the oil from all that. They got all the THC out of those pucks. And, but there might have been a tiny little bit more in there because the only way to get rid of it all is you've got to use alcohol. So they most probably did that at the end of it in another batch of oil. But the thing is, with it, by doing that, they came up with an oil that was based around about the 4,000 to 5,000 mil of THC. I take one mil, puts me to sleep. And um, do you know what happened to him? Same thing. Crashed out. Woke up a couple of hours later. Wow, what a headache. All he did was waste product. You can't overdose on this thing because once that body hits that mark, uh, see, they give us a, a syringe. You get a one mil syringe. And they tell you to only take 0.1 of a mil of the oil and you increase it until you get the desired effect of when it's working for you. Because everybody has a different level of use because of the simple fact of, um, what do they call that word, to where your body's used to it. So it happens with every drug, every single drug. Your body gets so used to it that you've got to take more for it to work. So by taking more, you need to take more. It's the same with this. One stage of the game, I was on eight tablets a day. And on that eight tablets a day, it was killing my kidneys, it was killing my liver, and it was getting worse, it was getting worse, and it was getting worse. As I said, I swapped to this at Christmas. I swapped on the 23rd of December. And I didn't drive for weeks. Did not drive for weeks. My son took me out for Christmas, everything like that. Good kid. Very good kid, my son. And um, made sure that I was able to go to all the family events. But this drug is killing me slowly. It's killing my kidneys. It's already, it's kill, almost killed my liver at one stage. And my doctor, I was very serious when I said that my doctor rang me up and said, well, you need to come into surgery urgently because my liver was that bad. And you ask any nurse or any doctor, it's 1500. So next time, actually, do this, do yourself a favor. Next time you go to the doctor, ask them, get a pen, write it down, what a liver reading of 1,563 means. 1,563, that was my liver reading. My kidney readings were on the edge, on the precipice, over the precipice. The short period of time from the 23rd through to, I think I used all the way to 22nd of January. Cost me two and a half grand total. All my savings in the bank gone so that I could reduce that, the dosage of that. And there it is, it's called, I'll put it up so you can see it. Oxycodone nylon. Its, its name is Endo. So, 
It's a proper script, as you saw. It's a proper script that comes from the thing. But get this. Get this. And now, this is a morphine equivalent. Now, this is one of the reasons I went and got the pack earlier. This medicine may cause drowsiness and may increase the effects of alcohol if affected. And now notice this. If affected, that word, if affected, if, do not drive a motor vehicle or operate machinery. If affected. That is classified as a class A drug. One of the most dangerous drugs you can get. That's given to me for nothing. Uh, normally just one pack would cost 77 bucks. Just one packet would cost 77 bucks. Um, but because I'm on the PBS and closing the gap, yeah, it's not. But the thing is, that's given to me for free. The one drug that can't hurt me for the time period that I need to withdraw of this, and this is actually one of the legal reasons that you can be prescribed cannabis. This was the last one they put me on. Uh, this, by the way, is a very nice flower. Northern Lights, it was called. It had the first bit of a bite when you first started using it, but after a while it became a very smooth smoke going down your throat and everything like that. But that, to get enough medication between my oil and the starter to the oil, because that's what it's used for, you use that in the two hour period to get you used to the, the thing while you're waiting on the oil to kick in, because it takes, lasts for two hours, oil kicks in after two hours, lasts for two hours, mentally here in the head for the heady feeling that you get two hours and there's not a I don't think there's a cannabis smoker out there that will tell you that it lasts longer than two hours because I guarantee you every person that smokes cannabis every two hours if they want pain relief they have to come along and do this they have to go oh sorry hang on I've got the wrong implement where is it where did I put it oh god what did I do with it Oh, I'll be right behind the camera. They do this. They come along and they suck on a bong. By the way, for those of you who don't know what that is, that is a bong that is legal to use in my home. I am legally allowed to use this only in my home. I can use this one in public. Why can't I use that one in public? Or why can't I use a pipe in public? Hang on. Where is it? Why can't I use this in public? I've got all the equipment I smoke for years. I've always used cannabis to kill my pain. So, there's my smoking equipment there. That's my traveller. And my spare canes. Keep, keep everything. They're due for a clean. One, I've only got one clean one left. But um, easy to put together. So, you've got to have a traveller. Um, I've now got my vape, which I can travel with, and everything like that. But I can't take this. That's bloody stupid. Why can't I have that in the car if I'm legal? See, this is what I mean. There's so many contradictory bloody laws with it. We've got to change them. But we can't change these laws, folks, if you don't stand up. If you don't vote for the Cannabis Party, if you don't turn around and stand up and help, we're just going to stay in the same situation we're in. But, see, it's not going to affect me in any way, shape or form, unless they, de unless they criminalise it medically again. But I've got my medical cannabis. I don't have to do what I'm doing. As you can see by the pictures up by the sides of me here, right? These are pictures from way back in the 1910, 1920s. Cannabis was used for a very, very, very long time in America, in every country in this world. Yet America turned around and changed the status of the drug, they called it marijuana, and changed it, and demonised it, and they, to yeah, tolerance, that's the word, thank you, Greg, sorry it took so long to do it, I accidentally covered the chat up again, I do apologise, mate, but it's tolerance, uh, you build up a tolerance to every drug, but cannabis, no, you can't build up a tolerance, your body, yeah, might, sort of need that little bit more, but it's not actually tolerance. 
that you're getting used to it because I guarantee you that um, at the most you're almost, you might go from one mil to two two mil in ten years. It could would take you ten years to need that much because your body will say, okay, no, I just need this much. That's all you take. And once you know that that's all you need, um, i.e., um, I'm on a I'm prescribed a drug called Canatec T50 uh, Topaz. I'm prescribed a Canatec T50 Ruby. Those two are my main ones. I take X amount of the Ruby, and I take X amount of thing. I take the Ruby in the day when I've got it, and I take the cannabis, uh, the uh, topaz at night. But in between, while I'm waiting for those to kick off, that's where this comes in. You have a smoke, you pull this out, or you pull your vape out, and you put a bit of that in, you have a couple of cones of that, and that gives you that two hour effect that you need to get through to when you actually are getting the right amount of the the uh, plant into your body. Now, for those of you that don't know about cannabis, uh, you'll see cannabinoid pictures popping up behind me all the time. Please take notice of these images here. Have a read of them. Search cannabis 1920. Search cannabis 1900. You'll see thousands upon thousands upon thousands of these images of bottles that state cannabis. You will actually see them in some old, you know those chemists that still have all the bottles like that up on the top shelf, just to remind them of the old days of alchemy. And um, But it was found that, oh, actually that's a good one uh, be, behind me now. Cannabis, um, white pine and cannabis as cough syrup that they gave to kid, edible cannabis timeline even. So you've only got to look what is out there, folks. And there you go, there is cough syrup. And it even tells you how much for a children to take, a child. It's that sort of thing. Um, and even as an oil, um, and even as a cough medicine. But if you take cough medicine today, you're always told don't take too much, you've got alcohol in it. Yet we give that same medicine to children. Yet why can't we give them a medicine that can't hurt us? Have a look at it, these bottles. Look how old they are. This is how long it's been round, around. It's been around since the days of Moses even. It's sort of, there's no other plant. There's not a plant on this planet that God would have given mankind to look after themselves in a desert what that they could eat because God used to just drop it on the ground of a day they'd drop it on the ground fed the Israelites the Israelites collected it they fed clothed themselves and medicated themselves with manna this is manna it couldn't be anything else my mother strict Christian always called it manna but my mother was also a smoker and a user as I told everybody when I was a child I always knew that that bowl we weren't allowed to touch that was mum and dad my dad used to say, oh, I don't smoke cannabis. <laughs> he, he keeps on forgetting that we got memories back as child, a childhood of it sitting on the table. And um, But the point is, if you want it legal, the only way to get it legal, folks, is you've got to make it legal. And it's you. You are the ones that will make it legal. Not me. Not just the politicians. It's you that will make it legal. How do I know this? One... It's your vote that makes it so we can get the people to make it legal in Parliament. Two, if you want to stand up, it's your effort. You stop saying, OK, I'll, I'll, I'll just leave it up to everybody else. And you turn around and you've said, no, nah, it's time. I need to help. I'm going to stand up this year and I'm going to help. That would help. But if you don't do anything, if you sit back and say, oh man, whatever, they'll do it one day. They fucking won't. And I'm sorry for swearing. There's no other word for it. They won't. They just won't. Ten effing years. Ten effing years. I have been lobbying the government in regard to this one subject. When I found out that this was 
doing things to a friend of mine where it was he healing him. Never through the epileptic, my mate Gordon, who used to have um, seizures similar to what Michael had. And it was cannabis that helped him. Cannabis has now helped my kidneys, my liver. So I know it's not thing. The only paranoia that this comes from, that you get, that's the fear of being right. Do you feel, do I, do I look scared? Do I look paranoid? No, look at me. I've got cannabis in my hand. Oh, I can use it as a maraca. No, there you go. Maraca. Cannabis maraca. I'm not scared of the police. Why? Because I'm fucking legal. I'm medically legal. I don't have to do this. I really don't. I could turn around and say, okay, I'm legal. That's it. But I'm asking you. I'm asking all of you to get up and stand up and do something about it. Because at the moment, I have to take this because I could run out of power and the other thing. I have to take those. Oops, sorry. There we go. That is five milligram endone tablets. This is what I have to take to get two hours sleep. Two. Equivalent to 10 milligram of morphine. I have no choice. I don't have any other medicine. I don't have any cannabis at the moment. The stuff in the vape is you know, so thin and everything, it takes the edge off it. That's it. And it's plus the battery's flat. But that's what I'm forced to take. My, I'm so used to the damn thing. They taste, by the way, they taste like shit. But I'm so used to it that I don't even take water. Or I'll take water later, but I'll chew them up. Because if I, I know if I chew them up, they work quicker. But all I'm going to get, these will take a little bit quicker than cannabis takes to kick in. These take about an hour, hour, 15, 20 minutes. Once they kick in, and by the way, that wasn't a full dose. That was a minor dose. It was what I take when, if I don't want to go to sleep, but I want to get out of pain, which is two. And if I want to sleep, then I have to take, on top of that, one Panadine Fort. I don't take any more than that. That's what I call my maximum dose that I will take of these drugs. Uh, I know people that are taking 20 a day, 20 a day. The maximum recommended is eight. But they are so used to the drug because they don't withdraw, they don't do what I, they don't have, they don't save up and do everything for it. So they're out there risking their lives, risking their kidneys, risking their livers. And it was only since I've been on that drug that I got fat. Body went downhill. The only thing that damaged my heart was that certain injection about two years ago that we're all told we have to have. And um, my, my oil order is damaged. And because um, it wasn't long after that that the next election came up and um, I had another heart attack. And I went straight out and manned the, the voting booth because I was sick. And that trip in hospital, because I knew what caused it, that trip in hospital to me said, OK, I'm not going to sit at home. If I'm going to die, I'm going to die out where people can see me because I live on my own. And, um, but I wanted to do something before I went. I wanted to try and make this legal for everybody else. Because it doesn't cause paranoia. It does not turn you into an idiot. And I did take a legitimate dose a while ago, about two hours ago I took that dose. That was a legitimate dose. But as you saw, I just needed to take something for it because it only lasted two hours. That's it. It's got, that's its max time. Even with a thing, but that's the max time here. The psychedelic effect that they call it. What it is, it's not even a psychedelic effect. To a pain person, it's just pain free. Because what it does, yeah, we get that lightheadedness. We, we feel a little bit of lightheadedness on these things. We get the same thing on this for a couple of hours. That's why it says if affected, don't drive your car. But if affected, Three weeks later, if you've got it in your bloodstream, they'll arrest you. 
send you to court for having cannabis that you used three weeks ago. That's bullshit. It's got to stop. And I'm calling that all prisons should release every single cannabis person that has been arrested for cannabis-related drugs that has not committed a violent crime. If they have not committed a violent crime, I'm calling for them to be released from prison. Providing they haven't committed that violent crime, they should be released from prison immediately. Because of the simple fact, this drug is not really a drug. This plant is something that our body is designed for. The cannabinoid system helps the body communicate. It's how the body works. That's why when you're on cannabis, you're more alert. And even police officers have said people on cannabis, when they drive, are far safer. They drive slower. They're not idiots on the road. They're more alert and everything like that. The only time you have a problem is like straight after you've got no fine like trying to do a puzzle like a nightmare say if that was a puzzle well how do I do that sort of, do I go over there or do I go over there and they're simple puzzles and I, they can't work it out I guarantee you if they had that simple puzzle that I stump my friends on and trust me it's so easy you go up down turn that's it that's how you undo it go up down but yeah the turn is as you're going up. So you're going up and down and you're turning as you're going. And what that does, that unlocks everything and then you have two pieces of puzzle. And I stump everybody when they're on cannabis. In that first two hour period, I've never got anybody that could do it. Never. Not even me. And I know how to do it. Because when you're a bit heady, yeah. And I do agree with that two hour period. But after that two hour period, if you don't have another smoke, it's just like this, if affected. If you have alcohol and cannabis, it doesn't affect you the same way as this does. If you have this and alcohol, man, you can collapse and drop like a lot of a thing. This is the drug, the same drug that they use in nightclubs to um, it's called uh, uh, it's one of the drugs sorry it's one of the uh, drugs they call it a roofie and um, it's been used for many years for that criminally um, oh you watch it too <laughs> but um, the thing is folks it's sort of it's a comparison which do you think okay I'm going to ask you guys. And, yeah, I know you just can't chat back straight away. Which do you think is safer? Something natural? Oh, sorry, wrong one. Something natural? Or something that they make? Fair enough, this eventually comes from the, um, I think it's cocaine. Yeah, I think it comes, it comes from cocaine, doesn't it? Uh, morphine? Morphine comes from cocaine, Greek. No, no, opium. Comes from the opium plant, sorry. Comes from the opium plant. So that comes from the opium plant. And the reason why it's so probably not addictive is they've taken out certain parts of it chemically and they've taken that addiction. And I've got to admit, it's quicker to come off that. I can come off this far easier than I'm on pan. When I'm on panadine fort, mate, I always get withdrawal pain. I try and withdraw off them. Yeah, instant withdrawal. That's why I need the cannabis. Um, but I try and withdraw off this. I could most probably withdraw off two in one day. And as long as I stick to it and can bear that little bit of pain, yeah, I can drop it. But to try and do that, but to go any more than two, yeah, that's when you need this to help you. So it's just a matter of um, doing what you can with it to aid in the removal of this. See, cannabis is not a gateway drug it's a remove it's it's an exit drug it's, it should be called an exit drug because that is dangerous that is free to me it cost you as i said it'll cost you 77 bucks
7773. I read that off the computer screen, the picture. So if I can see it, you can see it. That's how much it, co it costs you without it being on the PBS and things like that. But this drug is dangerous. This drug can kill you. You're going to overdose on this drug. It can't kill you. Nug Smasher, the people at Nug Smasher didn't mean to do it to prove it, but it was the boss, just they took it into the boss, because the boss knew he could drink everything, he knew that he was able to drink a larger dose, and they came in with a container about that size, maybe a bit bigger. That's a pea container if anybody wants to know what it is. It's what I put my dragon fruit in, uh, pollen in. And um, the thing is, it sort of there was about that much there was about that much in the container not pollen but uh, cannabis oil that is turned out they when they tested it it was well over either 4,000 or 5,000 I can't think off the top of my head you can go to Nug Smasher YouTube channel and you, you can see it for yourself they talk about the strongest oil they've made and it was this is the video that I'm talking about and they take it in the boss to sample and they're thinking that he's going to get one of these devices they're thinking he's going to get one of these and sample it they've come in they've gone yep no don't worry nothing nothing bad's been in this except dragon fruit pole right and he's got it and he's looking at it looking at the color and everything like that and he goes that quick swallow it a lot there was over five thousand four to five thousand milligrams i take one milligram and i'm asleep that's the thing about cannabis it made him sleep because his body was taken to the level that the body will allow the cannabis to go to the cannabis doesn't get any worse it just takes longer to get it out of your system that's all it does all you're doing is wasting your product but once it's in your system, it's not going to keep you high for a week. The headiness still only lasts for two hours. If you do what he did, you'll sleep. You'll sleep well for about eight hours. And trust me, I take one mil and I sleep great for eight hours. But that video alone is the proof that this is not a dangerous drug. It's not. that You see him actually swallow that amount of oil. And they tested it, put it on a THC, made it over to, they calculated it, it was over to that amount of, yeah, just amazing. I think it was about 20 mil of oil, oil actually, maybe about 20 mil. And um, they turned around and just were amazed, and even they said, he was just knocked out, just down. But everybody knows you can't OD, and all, all it's going to do is put you to sleep. That's it. You take the right amount, and the right amount of cannabis is what you want when you're taking it to sleep, is the right amount. Because your body will know when that right amount is. And you'll know because when you're taking it and first learning what that dose of that particular brand is, because every brand is different, and you have to do the same trick with every single brand. And that's the only difference is one brand you might need that much of a syringe, another brand you might need that much of a syringe. But that's only because it's the THC level in the cannabis of that product is lower, so you need more. But it's the THC that puts you to sleep. It's the THC that gives you that two-hour headiness. And even if you are taking a sleep, you still get that two-hour headiness. And yeah, just sit back and relax. And that's it. You just sit back and relax. Man, I sit there and just put my arms down by my side and just go, Pain free. Those two words come out of my mouth every time I take the medicine. Pain free. It says when God comes back, you'll be free from pain. I wonder what he's planning to use, considering they gave it to Moses and everything. Pain free, and I mean it's pain free. And anybody that's got a spinal problem, even if you don't use cannabis, if you've had a spinal problem, trust me, you know what bad pain is. If you've had a baby, trust me, the only people that know how painful 
a pregnancy is is a man with a bad back. Any woman will tell you that. Any woman, woman that's had a bad back, sorry, any woman that's had a bad back will tell you straight away. People with bad backs know how uh, pregnancy feels, and um, and it's true. It really, truly really does. Yeah, thanks, mate. I know. I did think of it eventually, <laughs> but. Um, it's very, very true. It's sort of, you just can't overdose on this drug, no matter what you do. You can try. I've known people that have, and they just look like idiots, because all they've done is they've wasted 150 bucks worth of product. And unfortunately, suicide is not driven by the, by the cannabis or anything like that. A suicidal person is just suicidal, full stop. It's like when you go on this drug, and trust me, when I went on that drug, I had to sit between, um, was it? there were seven doctors total, two psychologists, two psychiatrists, two medical doctors, and one physiotherapist. And I had to sit, oh, sorry, no, eight doctors. I forgot about the surgeon, because they do a lidocaine test. You spend the whole day in the hospital. And um, they test you, and trust me, they know if you're in pain or not in pain, because that test, that they do is designed to actually prove to them that you're actually in pain and they know exactly how to tell whether you're in pain or not in pain they're professionals at it because I went to the best pain clinic in this country and um, because I found out the best doctor in, for pain was in this in this hospital I traveled uh, 200 kilometers because I was living 200 kilometers away at the time so I traveled 200 k's down to um, Sydney to the hospital. I went to the Royal North Shore. By the way, as to this day, I still reckon the Royal North Shore Pain Clinic has the best doctors, really does. And they don't take any shit. They're honest with you and they'll care for you. And when they put you through these tests, they're very placid, placid, and they don't overwhelm you or anything like that. Because they're there to help you. Uh, back then, yeah, cannabis wasn't available. That's all that was available. That is all that was available, freely prescribed. They know that this is this is a problem because there are people out there that are abusing it that didn't work out that um, thing. But see, I've never been above eight tablets. Why have I never been above eight tablets? Because I never used to, never always got this legally. I was never a legal patient, but I used to use it to withdraw from the endone and the panadithol because I've been on percodone, I've been on oxycodone, I've been on Percocet, I've been on this, I've been on that. All exactly the same drug, just different names and different doses. At one stage of the game when I was, I think i just turned 30, I was still working at the nightclub, i just turned 30. And I'd actually done something on stage and re-injured my back. And man, I was in a great deal of pain. I was in a massive amount of pain. And they had to put me on a larger dose. And that was the only time in all that time that I've had to go on that laser dose. But I straight away, as soon as I could, as soon as I could afford it, got my pay packet, went down to me mate, got what I could off me mate, went home, told my wife to be quiet. I'm using it. I'm getting off the endone, I'm lowering my dose. And it was the only time my wife never argued with me because she knew I, when I went and got that, she knew I was in agony. And um, she was religious, but she knew I was in agony. And it was the only time she would, if I used it any other time, she would have gone off a nut. And trust me, she would have gone off a nut. Uh, people were scared of my ex wife. Um, but the thing is, it's sort of, even she knew that I needed it back then. My first wife, mate, she was a nurse. She left me. When I, I'm getting out of hospital after my first surgery, I'm getting out. She's scooting off with a tow truck driver. Friends with him now. but it's only, I made friends with him because of my son. And because my son treats him like that. It's, he raised my son as a father. So. And... Um, when I finally did find them and everything like that, Josh had already established the relation with Pete. I'm not going to stop that. So I made friends with Pete because I knew it wasn't really his fault. Um, he was involved in it, but let's just say all the fault I blame on my ex. 
but she had the audacity, I'm being brought home by ambulance, this is how bad I was after surgery. I was brought home by ambulance because I couldn't walk, I couldn't do anything. They brought me home, they carried me in, in a stretcher. She was supposed to be there, supposed to have everything ready for me. Mate, she scarpered. She knew what my life was going to be like. She scarpered. And I eventually found out that's the reason she scarpered. She thought, oh no, I'm going to be stuck with a cripple. She was a nurse. And uh, wasn't a very caring nurse. Never was. Never a very caring person. And, um, but the thing is, when it came to cannabis for a period of time and everything, um, wasn't like my second life. No, totally different. Totally di total difference. Total difference. She just didn't give a shit. She says, oh, well, just take your painkillers and be done with it. And, um, yeah, very blunt woman, unfortunately. And um, so I lived my life, got away, and went up, moved up to find my son, got my job as a three-eyed alien. Then all of a sudden, I'm working in a nightclub, and um, yeah, I spent eight years in that complex. Best eight years of my life. To this day, I'll still say it, even though I'm a Christian, I uh, still reckon it was the best eight years of my life. I ran a strip show and I ran a nightclub. I used to do wedge t-shirt competitions without fail every Friday night. But I was young. But even back then, I was in agony. So I had to use this technique to do it. But the thing is with me, whenever I've found a problem, I've stood up for it. And this is what I need you to do. I need every cannabis smoker out there. I need every cannabis person out there. Because it is actually very true that liberals want to increase the penalties. One Nation want to increase the penalties. And there's plenty of video evidence out there of interviews with these politicians that are saying it. They are what are currently, this current government is what is truly holding up because it's the politicians within this government that don't want it. Um, I know that Labor tried to get it legal because I know a couple of Labor people that, yeah, have smoked in their life. And um, I was a member of that party. I actually used to be a member of the Liberal Party. Uh, never joined uh, the One Nation. I think I joined Clive Palmer, Palmer's for about a week until I found out the idiocy of the group. And, um, but over the years, I'd watched this party, this one party, the legalised camp. I, it was originally called the Hemp Party and I saw them growing and everything. And I got to admit, yeah, I saw infighting happen every now and then. And it happens in every party, trust me, it really does. It's just a couple of people don't agree. That's what infighting is. They just don't agree on one subject. Infighting's not that bad, but um, it was that reefer madness. That's the video that caused this whole prohibition, reefer madness video. And because of it, we are now in the situation where if we don't stand up and fight, guys, it's never going to happen. And there's a chance they could even take the medical stuff away from us. And that's not right. The very fact of what this government is doing and blocking the cannabis and it was this government that blocked it. And I know, I know that the Labor put in the bill because I actually know the member that put the bill in. Um, as I said, I was part of that party. He, of course, used to call me Spaceman, but... And, um, yeah, I get, get called Spaceman. Why? Because I've been a UFO researcher all my life. Never going to stop. But the thing is, I learnt that this party actually started meaning something. I saw people leaving other parties and joining this party, friends of mine, that turn around and says, oh no, we're not voting that anymore. We're actually joining the, the cannabis party. Oh, I thought about it, thought about it, thought about it, thought about it. So I started making inquiries myself, more to what they were talking about. And then I actually had my first interview with uh, Dr. Pop because I was trying to get it legalised and I wanted Andrew to come on the show. Spoke with Andrew on the show. I learnt so much from Andrew. And after it was pretty much after that that my drive increased. I knew what he had told me was the truth. And I could tell it was the truth. And what I'm hearing from everybody in the legalisation cannabis party is the truth. And trust me, 
we all say one thing. We want it legalised. We will make sure it's legalised. And this is the politicians and the thing. This is why they joined the party. They're there and they stood up this year. And fair enough, if, maybe if I wasn't sick, I might have done the same. But, and please don't call me and ask me again to why aren't I running? Because I just told you um, earlier, and I'll tell you again, I was very ill at the beginning of the year. And then everything else turned around and happened. And then I eventually worked out that this is actually my best bet. So last election, I jumped ship. It wasn't a week before the election. Then I had the heart attack, spent a few days in hospital, got out, they pretty much said, Mr. Avery, look, if you go home, there's a good chance you're gonna die. And I said, what's gonna happen if I stay here? There's a good chance you're gonna die. My eye, my aorta is stuffed, and it's got a heart murmur. And heart murmurs are dangerous, especially at my age, um, especially with all my other problems. And anybody that knows me has even seen the videos of those pictures of my heart. I also have blocked arteries throughout my near my heart and everything like that. Um, they classified it as unstable in China down the road, but. It's since actually gotten better. They actually put me on a drug that actually does work. So that managed to fix that problem, but my aorta is still stuffed. So I've got to live with all these physical problems. I've got to try and survive with all these physical problems that I've got, but I do my best. I'm not afraid to admit that when my liver starts playing up and everything like that, I actually do smell like ammonia. I don't hide that fact. I, I actually warn people if they smell it, they've got to tell me so I can go and do something about it. Because of the simple fact, I need medication. I need that medication fast. Same with the thing. If you ever come across anybody that smells of urea, think, are they old? Or are they young? Everything. I've smelled young people with that same smell. There was nothing else. I thought one guy's cat peed on him until he said that he didn't own a cat. I heard a comment made about something in a hospital one day. And then, because like, you know, you could hear everything in a fucking hospital. You hear everything. And especially in ED. And I'm laying in the bed. My ticket wasn't working that day as well. You know, I've got a few trips in there. And I think that was actually, yeah, that was actually back when the, that injection caused the problem. And I went into clinical heart failure. There, I was sitting in the bed. Most of us were there for the heart and everything like that. But most of the time I was there. But I think it was just before I left, I was put into another area out of the ED. And then I actually heard the doctor telling the other person that they're hanging a bit on, most probably 40, 50, um, not too old. They were talking to the doctor about the problem. Is it, is it going to get better? And the doctor said, look, if we can get your liver readings fine, the ammonia smell will go. The urea one's going to take a little bit longer because the kidney has got to get rid of that urea somehow. And it pumps it out in your sweat. So if you smell something like that, don't ridicule and think they've peed themselves, for God's sake. They most probably need urgent medical attention. And I tell everybody that because I have experienced that myself with the ammonia, very badly with the ammonia. So bad that I took it when I went to see the doctor about it, uh, because I was trying to tell her about the smell that I'm smelling all the time. And I walked in the surgery and on this day, I just didn't take off the shirt before I went to see her, I left the shirt on. So when I walked in, everybody in the surgery moved that way, moved that way. The ammonia was so strong, it was burning my eyes. It was burning my eyes. You can imagine what I was doing everybody else's. And I walked into Kelly and I said, look Kelly, I didn't go home, didn't change my shirt and for a reason. I said, you need to smell what's going on with my body. The moment she smelled it, she knew. Started treating for it. And uh, I'd started getting better, but it was, wasn't until I was on the cannabis that it actually did get better. It was still iffy right up until Christmas. It really was. That's why my doctor got so excited when it got better. And um, I suppose I would if I had a patient get, get better after a certain period of time where they've been extremely, extremely ill. So you've got to ask yourself, 
do we want people to go through shit like that? And it's get, I'm getting to a point, so please bear with me. Because that's what it's like with pain patients. You can't see a pain patient. You can't smell a pain patient. Um, they don't make any smells like someone with a bad liver, bad kidneys. But if they put you on that, yes, you're going to smell them. Because that's eventually going to destroy their liver. It's going to eventually destroy their kidneys. This won't. This will not. I can get it medically legal. I'm safe. Other patients, they might have a shitty doctor that won't prescribe cannabis because they, they don't want to be a drug dealer. Serious. I, my regular GP told me, said, great doctor, best diagnostician I've ever come across. Said the same thing. She didn't want to be a drug dealer. Huh? Didn't want to be a drug dealer. I said, Kelly, I said, you prescribe me bloody morphine. I said, if, you, if you're ever going to be a, dr a drug dealer, I said, you're going to bloody get it. And now, it's sort of, but cannabis, they're too scared to. Why? Because it's their peers that are pressuring them. I had a cannabis doctor retired because of the pressure from his peers because he was prescribing cannabis to his elderly pain patients. I was one of those elderly pain patients. And uh, oh, I've got all the other things that come along with age. Every, every bloody problem. Uh, sort of diabetes, the whole bloody lot. But the thing is, I still get off my ass and I still fight to get this legalised. And you've only got to, you can ring up Canberra, you ask Canberra, it's sort of you go ring up the health minister's office, oh, you ever come across the uh, cannabis protester? Uh, does he really do what he does? And they'll all tell you, yes, he rings us on a regular basis. Might not be every week, but when I find evidence, uh, like stuff at David's Temple, and as much evidence as I can find, I send it to them, and I make sure they know about it. And I've been pushing this government for a long time. And I've pushed the last government, pushed the government before that. The moment they come into power, I do it because I know that this drug needs to be legal it needs to be decriminalised because it doesn't do anything that they say it does. Now at the moment, okay, I've been on the endone. I don't know if you've noticed my eyes. You might have noticed my eyes are slowly closing. Right? That's because I'm. this is making me tired. And, and I've got to admit, it's got a similar major effect for about two maybe three hours but you might not get it but if you haven't slept or you haven't eaten and then you take one of these or you take two then this happens you start getting drowsy but I need something for pain so I had to take something for pain you, you compare that when I was using that I was alert and you've got to admit I was more alert when I was using this compared to using this. Go back and watch the video. You will see a change in me to where I was using that, where I was boisterous. And yeah, I'm always boisterous, that's just me. And anybody that watches my channel will tell you that. I agree, I'm a very, I've been boisterous ever since I worked in the club. And, um, okay, sorry, DuPont was also part of, oh yeah, DuPont was in the, um, because of nylon, uh, it was gonna kill nylon. And um, a lot of echoes. Oh, sorry, Greg. Sorry, mate, hang on, hang on, I can fix that. That better? Is that better, Greg? But, um, yeah. So look at the difference. Go back, watch the whole video. Look at this, me using that. And watch last night's, because I used that a lot last night. And then watch me using this. There's more chance. You listen to my words. I can even feel it in my words. This is affecting me. That did not affect me in any way, shape or form. And you've only got to watch the video to see it. Echo a lot. I can't work out what's going on. I don't think there's any filters on, is there? Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. I think it's capturing through the video. Is that better? Is it echoing now? Uh, Michael... Is it, uh, Michael's back by the way. Um, is it echoing now? Hello, is it echoing now? Echo, 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 echo. Okay, that's my echo. 
<laughs> but yeah, there's a may. You look at the difference in me now. My voice has changed. My eyes, you can see my eyes drooping more, everything like that, compared to when I was trying, like using the last little remnants of this. And I'm not going to use this yet. This, what is left in there, that is for when I'm in agony, absolute sheer agony. And trust me, it's going to happen sooner or later. I'll be, there'll be a day when I'm in a major, major agony. But I'll always keep a little bit, just a little bit, just to cover me, just in case that I need something for major. Um, what? Well, not live. What do you mean I'm not live? It says I'm live. I'm not live. Have I gone off air, have I? Ah, this is... Oh, no echo. Ah, sorry. Yeah. It said no live, not live. Oh, God, mate. You scared the shit out of me. Uh, it's just me, mate. Just me friend bloody stirring me up. That's all it is. But, um, the guy in the chat, Greg and I worked together for quite some years in the same nightclub uh, clubs. And uh, they're called Players Megadrome Nightclubs. Brilliant clubs. Absolutely brilliant. And um, that's where I got into this sort of work, advertising, doing things like that. Um, I still do advertising for other people, just little shit like making up stuff. Uh, not these particular posters, but I, do, I still do that. I've actually, even since trained to do all this sort of stuff, I've retrained myself a lot. And um, it's sort of making me uh, different to what it was and everything like that. That when you look at it, yet every time I'm on cannabis, yeah. But even if I'm on, uh, which one is it? Yeah, one of these is the, the sleepy. No, yeah, this one. That's a sleepy boy, that one. I call that a sleepy boy. That's why it's there. That's why I kept this particular one. Because I've most probably got, I'd have most probably 20 pipes in that. That's enough to get me one night of pain. And so I'm keeping that, and I'll always keep that. Or I might need it. I'm in a lot of pain, and I'm waiting for oil to kick in. So I've just got that. I'll always make sure I've got a little bit of the flour. And, um, but the thing is, look at the difference in me now compared to before. I've slowed down. The moment I took that endone, I started slowing down. And, um, the more I slow down, slow down and slow down, um, it's sort of turned around and, um, yeah. It's getting worse. Even now, I can feel it getting worse now. But look at my eyes. Have a look at my eyes. Right? I wouldn't drive like this. But it says if I'm not affected, I'm allowed to and I can't be arrested because I've got a legal piece of paper in front of me that legally says I can and that actually, that's what that really is. It says, if affected, do not drive. So as long as I'm taking that and I say I'm not affected and I drive, I'm legally safe. Um, but if I'm affected, yeah, the cops would know because I'd be like, I'd be currently in the state that I'm in now to where I'm slower and everything like that. That's the difference between the two drugs. Look at the alertness I had when I was using the cannabis to kill the pain before it, uh, the battery ran out. And the moment that battery ran out, I needed to take this. And it got, gave me a chance to show you the drug and actually physically show you the packet and everything like that. So I was able to do that out of it. But I'm a lot slower. I'm um, not as effective as I am. And I've been like that on Endone every single time. It just slows me down. It doesn't sort of zonk me. This is why I only get two hours sleep on the damn thing. Because it doesn't work that well. Even, I've had people say, oh, it knocks me out. I've been on it for 40 fucking years. More than 40 years. It's the same drug, but before went through the pain clinic. It's the exact same drug they gave me. It just had a different name. The old name that they gave me was Pacodin. It was exactly the same. Uh, they tried me on codeine um, and all the different things. It's sort of, they tried me on quite a lot of drugs. 
but nothing ever worked to kill the pain. This is the only thing that ever really killed the pain. And I went through a whole range of drug trials too, where they tried me on uh, diabetic drugs, they tried me on epileptic drugs, because they there were a couple of diabetic drugs that killed pain. There's a couple of epileptic drugs that kill pain, gabapentum and epilim. And they do actually stop pain for certain people if it's one certain pain. But it was doing absolutely nothing for me because my body was rejecting the medicine. I got a allergic reactions to them. And unfortunately, I also get them as well. I get allergic reaction to these drugs. But I never had any allergic reactions to that. Never, not one. And that worked. That worked for many years. It killed my pain. I didn't really get that much sleep. My life was hell. And I wasn't really out there and I wasn't doing anything. But the moment I went back to using cannabis back then, because uh, as I said, it is l illegally cheaper. You can buy it illegally cheaper than me going to the chemist. That The price I pay for that, I would get three times the amount. For the same, it's three times the amount of that. So, what are you going to say? It's sort of, okay, well, you're not talking about voting for the election. Why? Why aren't you talking about that? But I am. That's what you don't realise. I'm telling my story. So, that's what I was doing at the election, at the federal election. I was telling my story. I was telling people. I pulled the script out of my pocket. And I said, look, I got this. I even had a sign on the door. I think it's in here somewhere. I think I put it in here. Um, actually, I'm, I can always put them in there. But how about I put them in there so they pop up every now and then? I had a sign on the door, a sign uh, leaning up against the fence. Um, one of my neighbours actually came and uh, secured it at the fence because they said someone was going to steal it. So they came and put a couple of cable ties on it for me. And um, nice neighbours, by the way. Unfortunately, they moved away. Sad loss to the neighbourhood, actually. Very sad loss to the neighbourhood. They were very, very good neighbours. Uh, it, um, yeah, it takes a lot to get neighbours like those guys. Um, let's just say my fridge died and everything. I said, oh, mate, he um, asked me about something. I'd feed up something with him and um, said to him, oh, look, mate, I can't do it. I don't have the money and everything like that. And he said, why? And I said, oh, well, uh, there are my profile pictures. Where the bloody hell is it? I don't know what I've done with them, folks. Sorry. I'll find them later. But, um, yeah, it just took time. And over, over the years, over the years, everything changed in my life. And you can see, actually, this is a good example of what Endane is doing to me. Now, I'm even feeling it now. And you most probably can hear me slowing down again compared to the epivescent normal self I was when I used cannabis. Total difference. Total difference. This is the one that they say causes you to be an absolute idiot. In fact, I was calmer. I was able to present my story far better. Now, I'm dopey. And I feel dopey. I'm not talking as fast. Why? Because I've taken morphine. I've taken opium. They give me opium for free. This is what they used in the drug wars to conquer the Chinese. This same drug. They gave it then. Because why it made them slow and uh, slowed them down. And this is why they tell you don't drink alcohol with it because it will slow you down even fucking more. But, like, I'll be right as rain in a couple of hours. That's all it takes. It's a couple of hours of just be back to bloody normal screaming in pain again. And um, it's wrong. I shouldn't have to go through that. I should just be able to go down to my backyard. And I've been to the local nursery, bought four cannabis plants from the local nursery, come home and go out in the garden and say, oh, okay, I might do a bit of gardening today. I then change my mind, then I put him aside and just sit him there for a day. They'll still be growing. They're that hardy. They still grow. And then you say to yourself, okay, well, yeah, we're finally legal. We can plant it. But the problem is we're not. We are not. We have to 
rely on hopefully honest drug dealers. This is what it was like prior to medically legal cannabis. We had to pray that the person or the dealer that was selling it to us was, wasn't dishonest, that wouldn't put um, speed, because this is what they used to do. They used to put speed, MMA, they put everything into it. Because what they want, they didn't want you coming onto it. This is why they called it the gateway drug, because they knew that the drug dealers were putting shit into it. They, were, they weren't getting them addicted to the cannabis. And anybody says, oh, I'm addicted to cannabis, I'll tell you now, your drug dealer is putting shit that is addictive into your cannabis. Cannabis is not addictive. Trust me. I haven't had that since January. I don't really give a shit about it. Um, I know I'm better with it, but I can go stop that in one day. I don't have to worry. And any cannabis person will tell you that you don't have to worry about that. You can stop it. If you don't have the money, you don't worry. You don't go into withdrawal. You don't do any of that shit. So how can that be more dangerous than this? This is Schedule A. This is Schedule B. This, you can drive two to three hours afterwards. Not a problem, you're still legal. As long as you're not affected, you can legally drive. Why is that same warning not on this? A Schedule B, right? Schedule B, that's Schedule A. That's Class A, Class B, right? But they've got both the same schedule. I think they've both got S8 on. Yeah, they're both S8. So even though that is categorised as a Schedule B, and that's categorised as a Schedule A, that's still got a Schedule 8 on. Why? Tax. Tax. But see... We shouldn't even have to pay tax on it. Why? Because we should be able to go and get this plant. And there are plenty of videos out there online. If you don't believe me about this statement, please go online and look for it. How to make cannabis oil at home. Not these fancy big labs. All these fancy big labs are doing is they're using uh, the ones that are making the vapes, the little skinny vape pens, they're using alcohol or butane to extract the THC. Butane, yeah, using butane to make medicine. That's why hash oil tastes like shit, because they've used butane. Even if you use ethanol, it still tastes like shit, but not as rough as what um, it is if you use butane. The very first one of those vape pens I used Turned out there was only four milligrams of uh, equivalent made, and it said clearly said made from four milligrams. That's ten. I paid more money for that little bloody thing, and it's. I used it. What was left of it afterwards, I, I saved what I could. I used what was left of it after in that. Then I, after I ran out of that, I used the last few big buds of that. I got um, a. I found out you could get a uh, hair straightener and you put it between the two hair straighteners and you squeeze it on the side and squeeze it together and it will squeeze out just enough resin and you'll just have enough to make a vape in your own vape machine. You just mix it with a bit of vape oil. It's that easy. You want oil, that this oil, right? this oil, this is how easy this oil is to make. You go and you get a container and everything. I've always had proper measuring cups because I make alcohol and everything like that. So I've got proper lab beaker stuff because when you make good alcohol, you need them to put under your still and shit like that, measuring, especially if you're mixing the alcohol, which I do. I make great mead scotch. I make great mead brandy. Um, I make a lot of honey-related alcohol. Um, I used to be a beekeeper until they killed all our bees recently. And um, But the thing is, I'm allowed to do all that shit. I'm allowed to use all that shit. That is more dangerous than me using this. But the problem is, right, as you can see here, there, cannabis use should not be a crime. And it shouldn't be. Look 
in the old days it wasn't. It was only because of the oil, as uh, Greg said, uh, DuPont was one of the causes for the um, for that as well, um, over the nylon. Um, it's the same as like when you're wearing, like at the moment, everybody notices that I always only wear cotton shirts. Why do I wear cotton shirts? Because if you wear a nylon shirt, you're wearing a plastic bag. Now, this is why it makes me laugh why they ban plastic bags. There's more plastic in the clothes that you bloody wear and throw away in the garbage tip than in those plastic bags that I could turn around and I could make, a, you could make a zip tie out of one of those old plastic bags they just banned. They were able to be recycled. That was a lie that they could never be recycled. That was a bullshit lie. The, and all the stuff about how it was Australia that was causing the little bit of problem out at sea, that was bullshit. That's all been proven that all that plastic coming out of that garbage patch in, at sea is coming from Asia. How do they know it's coming from Asia? Well, they know it's coming from Asia because everything written on it is in Asian. In some, either Chinese, or Malaysian, whatever. That's the language that's written on the plastic they're finding on this giant garbage island. It's not coming from America. It's not coming from Australia. It's not coming from England. It's coming from one country. You've only got to watch their videos about their polluted radio river. But in the old days, yes, even might have come from us like 50 years ago. Because, yeah, back then, they no one gave a shit. We used to throw shit out the windows. You didn't even get in trouble for it. Just threw it out the window. And you never got in trouble for it. Uh, it was my generation that stopped that. It sort of, um, we got old enough to stand up and protest, so we stopped that. Uh, we also got rid of those uh, icky paper straws that everybody has just fought to get back in, you idiots. We fought for many years, a lot, a lot more years, to get plastic straws. Did you know, and I'm going to tell everybody here, this is the shit that the government's put you through and lied to you about, and trust me, this is related to what I'm about to say about cannabis. Right, this here, this here straw, that straw has dangerous glue. The glue that holds a straw together, right, because straws are nothing more than a piece of paper on a, on a, on a pattern, I'm trying to, there we go, it's a strip of paper, that's a straw, that's how they make a straw. So if a straw is nothing more than a strip of paper, right? There. To make that, the glue that is used is toxic to the human body. We found this out 50 years ago. 50 years ago. Then as we were growing up, kids at school and shit like that, uh, we went from getting free milk to shit like that and then we were given uh, paper straws and these would always, you know what it's like, even now you're getting the same shit that we used to get in our mouth. You get bits of paper when you do it and you get a funny taste when you're using one of these straws. And it's the same glue that clogs the straws up because the moment that glue gets wet, it's activated again. That's why these straws fall apart. So hence, you are actually reconsuming the dangerous glues that we fought for many years to get rid of. This is more toxic than plastic. That can't be recycled because of the glue in it. That, 100% recyclable, 100%, even though they're different plastics. All the shit that you're hearing is bullshit. How do I know? I own ZS Plastics and Packing. I own a plastics company. And no, I'm not biased to plastic. I make my product from plastic, but I, in the process of doing it, I had to learn about plastic. And But one thing I knew long before that was that all that glue in there, everything in there is toxic. And I mean, it's toxic. Great quantity. If you ate a teaspoon of that glue in one go, guess where you're going to be? Six foot under. Yep, dead right. Six foot under. How do I know that? Because there were people dying from the glue on their hands. They were licking their fingers. And people were dropping like flies in these factories back in those days. They found out these glues were toxic. Yet they still use the exact same glue. 
It's the only glue that will hold up to water. And it's toxic to the human body. And you idiots fought for that. Why aren't you fighting for something like this? Cannabis, you could make a straw out of cannabis, and I can tell you now, the, the fibres of the cannabis plant could be held together with a much far less toxic glue that could be made from the resins in cannabis. Yeah, yeah, there's resins in cannabis that are non-harmful. And yet they still use these toxic shit. See, these are the people, same people that are telling you that cannabis shouldn't be legalised. But all you people out there, and I've got to admit, there's a lot of you. And I'm not talking about anybody in the... Can everybody in the cannabis party have already woken up to this. We woke up to it. We saw the bullshit lies. Not about... Not about the, sorry, a bit of shit on the camera. We saw the bullshit years ago about the plastic. We saw the use of that. Um, but we knew that plastic was the safest thing. Yes, there are things called microplastics. That is because the people that are selling us these things aren't using the right plastics. Some of the goods that you get, some of the food things that you get, they're not food safe. They say they are, but they're not really. Because you've got to remember, these are coming out of Asian countries where they don't give a shit. And I'm serious, they don't. If you saw some of the shit that my dad saw when he was living in China, my, my dad never bought anything from China, even though he married a Chinese lady. And it was actually her that warned him about it. She said, don't eat this, don't eat that, don't eat this, don't eat that. It's dangerous. You'll die. This is his new wife telling him what not to eat in China. And the problem is we're buying everything from them at the moment. but And we're not listening to people here that know and have knowledge of products like this and we have idiots running around. At the moment, we have the lunatics are currently running the asylum. And uh, we've got a lot of them in Parliament as well that are listening to the, the rest of the lunatics that are fighting for something that is. Um, if you're fighting for something, for God's sake, fight for cannabis and hemp because hemp, we can make rope, we can make clothes. I actually have two hemp shirts somewhere in here. Hemp. That's hemp. That's cannabis. That comes from a cannabis plant. That is material. Look at it. That's material. Linen made from hemp. Canvas made from hemp. Sails made from hemp. Rope made from hemp. Glue made from hemp. Bricks made from hemp. Um, hemp creek made from hemp. There are so many different things that this product can make. Then you've got the food component of it. The leaves can be used as a salad. And yes, if you process the leaves properly, you can actually extract that THC, but you've got to extract it properly. And I don't mind telling people how to do it. I learned it when I was young. And the whole point is, once you extract the THC, you have a non sci Psych psychoactive drug. It's sort of because it's not a drug anymore because you have removed it. Everything is in the alcohol. You dry that out, and all you got to do is put it on an open table in a well ventilated area. I guarantee you, within three hours, your um, head and buds and everything are going to be dry again. Even though there's not an ounce of THC in it. You cook it up, you grind it, you cook it up, put it in the food, man, it gives that flavour. That flavour stays there because the alcohol disappears and vanishes. And if anything does come across into the, the food, it burns off in seconds. So, yeah, you don't have to worry about that. So you still can eat it. And you can make plant matter out of it and you can turn it into soups and everything. I'll tell you now, raw cannabis leaf, the young ones, not the really, really big old ones and everything, the nice, soft little ones. If you want to try eating, if you're a cannabis user and you ever get your hands on one, try one. Or you want to try the little buds before they start, the ones that you tip. I went, uh, let's just say, I had uh, a couple of weeks in uh, Hawaii. One day I spent on my own. Hmm. 
I had a good one day. <laughs> a very good one day. Uh, so the, me and my son decided we wanted one day each. That was the plan. We had one day each. We could do anything we wanted. Uh, my son went and he um, went scuba diving. We were originally, that was supposed to be an event that was supposed to both go. And, um, but yeah, I managed to try a, I tried a hemp salad. Um, I had, uh, what else did I have? I had a um, hash brownie. And I think I had a um, leaf smoothie. Every single one of them were the sweetest food I've ever, and I'm, when I say sweet, I mean sweet. It was beautiful. And it had a beautiful flavour. The first bite, until you got used to it, tasted a little. It just gave you that little oof like that. But if you left it in your mouth, a sweetness came out of it. I mean, a beautiful sweet. Ask anybody that goes over to Amsterdam or anywhere that has had a leaf salad, they'll tell you the same thing. And in America, it's great over there. I've had a lot of people in America quite often have jumped on and said, oh, mate, it's great. I talk about it. And they say, oh, no, that's brilliant. And they tell, they tell me what they put in it. Like one guy was telling me how he put onions, walnuts, uh, pecans, tomato, put beetroot in it. Um, what was it? Alfalfa sprout. That was his salad. And that was pretty similar to what I had. It's sort of very similar. They made them very similar over there. And um, most beautiful salad I've ever eaten in my life. But I also ate some um, heads that were in the brownies and stuff like that. Yeah, they were good. Yeah, they were very good. 30 minutes later, mate, I'm stunned at how good this was. Pain free, just going, wow. I did not feel an ounce of pain for over 18 hours. My headiness had disappeared totally, totally. I was actually able to, on that day, I walked with my son all the way from the Hilton Hotel in Hawaii, all the way up to the main street, actually walked. I had not walked that far in years. But me and my son walked, he said, come on, Dad, he said, you've got no pain, let's walk. And yeah, your kids always make you do things you don't want to do. And we walked, and I was able to actually do it. And it was because of the cannabis. If I hadn't had the cannabis, I wouldn't have been able to do it. If I had this, because I had to take these with me, I had to declare them at um, customs and the forms I had to fill out because I was carrying these, I had to have prescriptions with me, everything like that. And um, I was less, I had less pain that day when I had the, went to the restaurant and everything like that. It wasn't a very big restaurant, it wasn't very fancy. They just served good food. And because of the, the legalness of it and everything like that, this had, was just after it became legal. Just, I think it was a month, maybe two months, it had just become legal. And people in Hawaii were experimenting with this one little restaurant and everything. And um, I also, had, I've got to admit, I did have some, I went to another restaurant when I was on the big island um, because I didn't like the food in one restaurant. So I walked down to another and actually found out they had similar stuff. So I grabbed a little bit more, but that one day that I had a moan and went to that restaurant was the best day of my life. But I would not have found all these things out about the plant. I would not have found out shit like this if I hadn't researched it. I would not have found out about Reef of Madness if I hadn't researched it. But why did I research it? Because I got off my ass and I started looking into it and saying, okay, t time's up. We need to change this shit right now. It must change. And I was determined. And I got even more determined after my mum passed and everything because I knew she couldn't be arrested or anything like that anymore. And um, it sort of, everything she did anyhow most probably ran out of statute of limitations because like we were kids, um, my mum and dad were still married back then. And, um, it sort of says so mum couldn't get in trouble. It sort of mum taught me everything I knew about cooking with cannabis. Um, I got the privilege of cooking with my mum, and anybody in my family will tell you I, my mum taught me how to cook. They just didn't know half the stuff that my mum taught me. And um, but the thing is, 
I never did anything about it in the old days. I used to say, oh, well, no, nah, it should be legal. It should be legal. I was like everybody else. And then I woke up and realised that the only way that this is going to change is if you get off your ass and do something about it. Think about it. Do you really want to face more years of having to go down to your mate's place, grab some smoke off him, um, he's just bought it off somebody else, you don't know what's in it, and um, then all of a sudden you're virtually tripping out and that, and cannabis smokes will tell you they've had that one, one buy that was a bit sus. And um, I saw, I went and got some one day and there was like a crystalline structure all over it. And I'm thinking, oh wow, that's got good fucking stuff on it. I thought it was gonna be great. Was not cannabis. It was not THC resin. Turned out it was speed. Mate, I was running around like it was chook with my head cut off. Because all of a sudden speed was introduced to it. And this is the problem. This is one of the reasons why one it needs to be medically legal and recreationally legal. So we can remove that dangerous criminal element that is using it to sell harder drugs. Because this drug, if anything, is an exit drug. I'm using it as an exit drug. Um, Michael used it as an exit drug. I know many other people would have used it as an exit drug. And Greg will sit here in the chat. And uh, Greg, you knew I smoked back in those days, didn't you? Mr. Sybil. And it's sort of like, as I said, I used to work with Greg in the nightclub. And I, there wasn't a night that I hadn't used. I was earning enough money I could afford it back then. And, um, but that's how I cope with pain because I had to go and drink alcohol as part of my job. And yeah, it was part of my job. I was meant to drink with my customers. That was my job, to mix with them. I was that manager that you see in a nightclub that runs around and goes and say, hi, how you going? My name's Anthony. How are you enjoying the club? You like it? Everything like that. And then you get girls say, oh no, there's some creepy guys over there or something like that. And you hear all these stories and everything. And uh, like my job was to settle them down, make them happy again. And sometimes I'd have to buy them a drink. Then I'd get the girls that wanted the free drinks and they'd come up and throw themselves at me. And, um, but the thing is, if I wasn't on cannabis back then, I would not have made it through my job. I most probably would have been dead because if I had drank alcohol with these, yeah, I would have been dead for sure. And um, I'm lucky I didn't. Very lucky I didn't. Yeah. Yeah, there, there you go. Greg just commented. There, there wasn't anybody that didn't smoke cannabis in our club. And um, it sort of never harmed us. We were a very, very good crew. And I mean, I've got to admit, I think we had the occasional shit edge start member um, and but we worked together and everything it's sort of we all had our different departments Greg was a bar manager I was promotional manager I worked my way up to got the day manager as well when Johnny McGee left uh, I was working two jobs then uh, so but it was a good job I didn't mind it it was extra money uh, I never told the wife about it <laughs> to this day um, but the thing is that I want this legal. You want this legal. And I know you want this legal. You really, really do. And I'm going to change the heading to this video. I'm going to change it to, to every cannabis smoker. You need to see this video. Because of the simple fact, even though we had so many problems getting it out there, they do need to see this video because they've got to realise that it's them that are going to make the difference. Even if it's just going and helping putting posters up. Even if it's only going there, helping and making sure that the staff that are there um, go and check on them say, look, do you guys need anything? Are you okay? Do you need anything? Can I go and get you a coffee or something like that? Help out that way if you can. Help out with water. Do whatever you can to help. Um, like, as I said, my friend, the, my friend's got a disability, and I admit, his disability is actually worse than mine because he doesn't just have bad knees and back and shit like that. He grew up with other disabilities all his life. 
So I knew that he wasn't up there. I did ask him, but I know for a fact he's more than likely contacted Arthur, all his um, cannabis smoking friends, and said to him, look, the Cannabis Party needs volunteers and we need to make this legal. And we really do. And now that um, I was going to get those images, that's right, I was going to get those images. And um, because the simple fact that when we turn around and we don't do anything with something, if we rely on everybody else, we are going to never, ever see the end of it, folks. Because it's just going to keep on going, and it's going to keep on going, and it's going to keep on going. Because of the simple fact, if people don't stand up, and that's all it is, all I'm asking you is a couple of days, a couple of days, come and help. Come and do what you can. And, um, wow, I've just seen something in, in an image, wow. Have to research that one, but the thing is, it's sort of it's up to you. We can't make you change your mind. I can't make you vote, but I can tell you now, without your help, it is never going to be legalised because you are the real power that is going to make this legal. Because it is you, the people out there, that have the power to change this. Because as I said, if we can, you imagine. And truly imagine it. Okay, we know why Labor and Liberal always get in. Why are those two parties always getting in? Have you ever seen the number of people at the polling booths that they have? They have minimum of three at every polling booth. Minimum. And they interchange throughout the day. They have supervisors there, sort of like what I'm doing. Um, they have supervisors that come over and check on everybody all day long making sure they're doing things. And let's just say, I know for a fact, I'm pretty sure it was the Labor Party that called the cops on this last election. Because like here we are, like we've put posters up everywhere and I bet you 10 to 1, they've tried to use the excuse that we were gonna have a protest. We weren't there to protest. We, we're trying to do this the right way this time. And I mean, and you should think about that. All the other times we've tried protesting, yeah, we still do our little Mardi Gras and still do little protests outside of offices, but that's one when there's not an election. But here we are now, there's an election. We have actually formed a legitimate party, a very, very legitimate party. And this party has grown stronger since the first days that I looked at it back when it was called the Hemp Party, because I have been a member since the Hemp Party. I joined it just before the name changes. Um, we changed it from, they, we got changed from one name to the other and then they changed it again to cover everything. Um, so we've been through, I think, two name changes since I've been with the party. But the thing is, we are a strong party. Yeah. To see these people working, dead set. I have never seen harder workers. Never seen harder workers. And um, some of the girls that are running around doing this stuff and everything like that, they are Trojans. They are, like, I have so much respect for these women. I'll tell you now, if the American women ever saw what these women do, mate, the American women would be ashamed of themselves. They really would. Because the girls that are working for our party, and I'm not just talking girls, I'm talking ladies that are similar in age to myself, one of them in a wheelchair that I worked with last year. Very, very nice lady. And she's now at one of the booths that um, I'm making sure that everything's there and everything's done. And, um, but these ladies are working their backsides off every time an event is on. They're there. Every time something needs to be done, they're there. And some of them are actually now running the thing now Karen Bur uh, Bird she was going to be on tonight but due to the problems that we actually had earlier that caused the sound problem um, she couldn't didn't have time to set up teams and everything she's got a couple of days now to set it up because I won't use zoom again not up to what it did to us tonight and um, yeah I'm trying to get the other members to come on and everything like that so please keep up keep an eye on these things like fair enough not 
not all the time everybody jumps onto the stream, but I only jump on here and stream to my regular subscribers. But it's better to have a chat popping up and everything like that when you've got a video and everything like that. Uh, because I just turn this into a video and then I take it over to the Cannabis Protester channel, drop it on there and then take it over to another channel, I drop it on there to make sure that it, I've got it on as many channels as I can get it on. Um, I haven't slept since yesterday uh, because I, by the time I finished uploading everything last night it was bloody morning and then I had to run around and do everything that I had to do and uh, that's what it's like and that's what volunteers do. We're trying to make sure that we get it legal so that you guys can use it as well. But the problem is we're calling for your help. We're saying, look, we need your help. If we don't ask, we're never gonna get it. We're asking for your help. I'm trying to be as nice as I can because we're trying to do something for you. Everybody says, oh, you're medical, or you don't care about us, that's bullshit. We most probably care more about it than you realise. Because here we are, we're experiencing, and trust me, listen to this, high quality, high THC products that actually work. Not like where you're going to your local drug dealer, risking, at, is he selling me hemp? Is he selling me good quality product? This is why whenever somebody goes to buy pot, they always try it before they buy. Always try before you buy. And that's what it's been like for over 50 years. You have to always go and try it before you buy. With these, you know what you're getting. If we were allowed to have and buy seeds of certain plants, and we know, we well, you know instantly, because you go to any American website, you know exactly how much the seed costs, you know the THC level of that plant, and they always put a range, it will say 19 to 25. Um, my cannabis always says 19, 25, or uh, 18 to 19, or 12, uh, 21 to 23. There's a range, because every strain of cannabis is different. It's the same with dragon fruit. Dragon fruit's a really weird plant, as everybody knows, found out last night, I grow dragon fruit. And um, a good example is like one fruit it's not the fruit that changes everything, it's the seeds within the fruit. Because if you use a mixed pollen, God, you could wind up with a thousand different flavors coming out of that seed. You get a thousand seeds, you could have a thousand different new hybrids. Um, I, for instance, I kept two of the seed, two of the seedlings out of one of the batches um, of what I call now ambrosia. And uh, because like after tasting it, it was like tasting the food of the gods. And um, then I got another one the other day, because the first one was white, second one was red. Serious. That's what it's like with cannabis. Cannabis is exactly the same. Every plant is the same. There's always going to be a bit of a variance in it. So this is the, this is one of the sort of problems with cannabis when you're buying illegally because you don't know what it is. See, the places that do actually sell it have to actually legally get the THC tested to know the level. And that's simply by going to a place and getting a tea meter and you can test the cannabis. And if I ever wanted to check on my cannabis, all I've got to do is buy a tea meter and I can, they're saying it's 19 and then all of a sudden it's only two. Yeah, I'd have a, something to do and I'd give them a ring and say this and everything like that. Oh, I've had a problem with one of my meds and got it sorted out straight away, got my money back, and not a problem, not this, um, but something else. And, um, but yeah, it gets sorted out. But when you're buying it illegally, you can't do it. Like if someone, good example, if someone stole, uh, say for instance, I bought that, someone stole, had opened it up and stole something out of it, I can go to the police. If that was um, presented yeah, where's, where's something that I can use as a demo? Yeah, there we go. That was in a plastic bag bought from Joe Blow down the road and he's ripped you off and he's giving you hemp instead of uh, cannabis and he's giving you shit CBD. CBD doesn't get you high and most people that are buying it, they're buying either to get high or to kill the pain. CBD doesn't kill the pain, it will help cure diseases and uh, 
other physical problems like epilepsy and different things like that. And there's a list of stuff that stuff c can work with. But when you're buying it illegally, you're getting whatever you get. You have no say in it. I go to the chemist and like, fair enough, I would rather go and grow my own. Because I've watched my mother process it all, my, all of my life. I would rather be able to legally allowed to be doing it. I, I would love to, when I revamp the dragon fruit out of the greenhouse, I would love to legally be able to grow them in my greenhouse and um, make my own medicine. Because as I said, all I've got to do is throw the buds out of this one into a bowl of coconut oil, boil it at a certain temperature for a certain period of time. That's it. Um, it's less dangerous than cooking deep fried chips. Far less dangerous. The oil is nowhere near as hot. That's a coconut oil, so you can eat it. And um, because everything that comes in one of these bottles, and there is absolutely nothing left in that one, is food safe food oil. You eat these oils and you buy these oils anytime. Even vape, the vape oil is vegetable oil of the description. But it's a certain type of vegetable oil. It's the same thing that's put in fog machines. The vape oil that we get now is pretty much exactly what we had for fog machines in the nightclub. And um, people just don't think about stuff like that. And that's the problem. People out there at the moment aren't thinking about, do we really want cannabis legal? And if you are a cannabis user and watch this video or watch this stream, please share it on your Facebook with friends that you know that smoke because we aren't the only ones that are having trouble getting this out there. There are still a couple of countries holding back, but it needs to be shared everywhere because people need to, one, realize what cannabis really does, how it helps you, how it heals you. As I said, I got seven texts, seven, seven texts because my liver's healed, my kidneys are healed. This is better, that is better. Different things, you know, I've got other problems as well and I don't want to talk about them. But those two I don't mind openly talking about because I know the embarrassment they've caused me over the years, I know the damage they've done to my body and everything like that. And, but it's better because of this. And all we are trying to do, folks, we are trying to get this medically legal, making sure, oh, there's all the candidates here. Okay, let's count. We have one, two, three, four. Where's the start there? She's the start there. I'll count them. I'll tell you the exact number of candidates in a second. All right, four, eight, 12. Sorry, folks. I know how to do this. I'm going to make it a bit smaller. I don't have to stretch as far. Right, there we go. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 candidate. Oh, tw sorry, 22 candidates. We have 22 candidates, guys, running for parliament. All right, as you can see, the this is starting to wear off and getting my edge back. Um, we've got 22 people running for parliament. Vote them in. Come and volunteer and help us get literature in the hands. Because all we need is just someone handing people a ticket. Because generally, if they've got something that 
is worth looking at because this is how I feel turned the sleaziest nightclub and I mean I turned the sleaziest nightclub and even Dita knew it was sleazy into the number one nightclub on the Gold Coast the number one correct Greg and um, hang on I'm going to put the screen actually I'm going to I'm going to get that up on the Google sorry I'm going to put this up so that people can actually see it I'm going to uh, add things now you can actually see what Greg says now yeah? sorry Greg I never thought of doing that um so yeah ah, mate, how are you? <laughs> but yeah folks it's sort of um the the point of it is that we can actually do something about it so Greg could you actually answer that question did I or did I not turn the sleaziest nightclub into the number one night spot on the Gold Coast. It was called Players Megadrome. So this is a direct question from somebody that I worked with for many years, a fellow manager in the club. And um, this this lucky bugger used to date the best looking chick in players. In the staff, every staff member wanted it. And um, wanted to go out with her. And this was the man that had a hand. But those of you out there that think that we don't have a chance this is the first time we actually do have a chance everybody we really do we actually have a chance to win we have a chance to change an election and change it from a big party to a couple of smaller parties where we could form a coalition ourselves because I tend to tell I'll tell you now I reckon if we got in that we, we got every member in the Greens will be knocking at our door to help form a government because they want it legalised just as much as we do yeah I do admit they do no, not every green there are I think three greens that are anti because I've spoken to them um, there are a couple of them but, um, the thing is it's sort of we have been through a lot over the years and we have turned around and suffered over the years we have been called criminals over the years and guys if you don't do something now oh i gotta admit greg it was a little bit sleazy mate it was and and it was known what i said it was known as the sleaziest nightclub in surface correct known as um but i took that club and turned it into the number one spot. And why? Because I pushed, I made sure I, I got the right people there. I, I, I made sure, see I didn't hunt for the tourists, not like all the other managers wanted, not like Greg, Greg, Greg was happy with the girls I brought in. I know that for a fact. <laughs> but um, the thing is, it's sort of the way that we can do this and why I'm telling you all because all I'm doing is what I used to do there now is I'm telling you the truth that's what I used to do at the club I used to tell them the truth I'd say look I go up there all the time and that's how I got my job it's a, I said look it's an it's a good club fair enough it was a little bit sleazy but that's the nature of what the club was because of the strip show that was next door and like yeah yeah, I was. Yeah, I spent a lot of time in the Megadrome. Everybody admitted that. Um, well, when I first started, I've got to admit that was only for about the first six months. And then after that, I got bored shitless like everybody else. And um, the thing is, it's sort of, if we can work together, if I can do that to one club, I can teach every volunteer in five minutes how to do exactly what I did to do that to that nightclub every volunteer and if every volunteer could do what I teach them we would have a much better voting thing 
because every politician here, somewhat okay, they've got a beard. I know plenty of politicians that have beards. So what they wear, um, like, yeah, hippie style clothing. So what? What's the matter with wearing hippie style clothing? Who said that we have to wear a suit? Well, Hawaii, do you see people, I'll tell you now, you go to Hawaii, you see no one wear a suit. I, like businessmen in Hawaii walk around in uh, Hawaiian t-shirts. Every businessman I met when I was in Hawaii, because I dealt with a lot of them, I was trying to sell my product over there. So I met quite a lot. And um, it sort of, I did get a warning from customs though, because I didn't know that I wasn't allowed to advertise my product while I was over there. And um, yeah, as I was leaving the country, they made a point of um, Yeah, but I, I ran, I, I did it both. You've got to remember that. I did both of them. That's why it was known, that's what I'm talking about. It was known as the sleaziest because of the mega. Um, but yeah, just because we've got beards, okay? We've got a beard, so what? I enjoy my beard. I'm never shaving that off. Last time it was shaved off was only because I was going in for surgery. And if I didn't uh, shave it off, they were going to shave it off so I could have surgery because it was urgent surgery. Um, and they were going to do it while I was asleep. But yeah, we've got 20, we got 20 something candidates, folks. We actually have enough candidates to make a difference. And this is what I mean. And again, there's something else pointing out this, right? This is wearing off already. You can see that I'm going from the slow back to the normal self again, because I'm not being drugged out by that. That's what I mean. Even this only has a two hour lifespan on it. Same as cannabis. Cannabis has got a two hours, got a revamp of two hours later. This is why their driving laws suck. I can have a smoke tonight. That could be detected in my blood three weeks down the road. But I openly, if I get asked, I'll say, yeah, I have one yeah, at that time, this day, and I haven't had any since. And the very fact that I don't have any, and my chemist can prove that at the moment, um, that I don't have any, that is only left over, that is for an emergency and I guarantee you I will not touch this unless there is an emergency because there are those days where I've got like massive uh, if you've ever been electrocuted and I mean I've been electrocuted so I know what it feels like uh, anybody that's done electronics has touched that little $10,000 um, not $10,000 10,000 volt little machine that they spin up and you touch to feel what an electric, electric shock costs uh, cop shed, but you're not getting any amps, so it's safe. But it still scares the shit out of you. Uh, I get that down the back of my legs every day, 24-7, 24-7. And it's sort of like you see jerky movements, and for me, that's what it is. It's that pain going down my back from the nerve because I've only got to move a slight bit and that nerve goes whoosh, and as it goes shoom, straight down the legs, straight down the toes. Anybody with sciatica knows exactly what I'm talking about. They know for a fact what I'm talking about because of the simple fact that, um, oh, why did I leave that over there? I should have brought that over here. That everybody knows that if you do something and you learn something over time, you will change. And what I'm trying to teach you guys is I'm trying to teach you that we need your help. And we do need your help. We really do, guys. Guys and girls, I tell you now, I have never, ever wanted to get something legalized as much as I want this to be legalized because it needs to be legalized. Uh, I want, and I've got a, oh, going, okay, I've got somebody I know in prison, all right? Uh, and it's for cannabis. I don't deny it. I know a couple of people in there. Think. I met a bloke the other day that met one of my cousins that did something wrong. And um, But it's affecting everybody. And when this happens, right, and this can happen to you, if you are a cannabis user, right, if you're a cannabis user, right, look in my eyes, I'm telling you the truth. If you're a cannabis user and they change the laws, you are at greater risk of being arrested. Greater risk. Because if they change the laws the way the Liberal and the One Nation do and want it, you're going to be in a lot of trouble if you get caught. As I said, I don't have to worry yet 
because this is still legal and uh, hopefully they keep this legal. Hopefully it gets on the bloody PBS. But if we can get people in, i.e. we have 20, i double check again, I'm pretty sure I said 22. Of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three. Ah, oh, I missed somebody. Twenty three candidates. We have twenty three candidates, and I'm going to try and get them into the chat because these should that's what the job I forgot to do because of uh, what happened with something happened today and uh, I never got to stick these these should have been appearing up in the, behind me in the stream because these are our candidates and I do apologize to my candidates this is just me being lazy when I got home I do apologize uh, I should have done this before I even started the stream um, because we have 23 beautiful candidates there that with those 23 candidates, God, even with 15, if we had 15 candidates, if we got 15 candidates in power that, um, hang on uh, 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 actually that's in the right file so why aren't they appearing well they might be appearing and so on, I'm just going to copy them just in case but, yeah, I thought they were supposed to be coming up. I'm pretty sure I've got the right file. Uh, sorry, folks, I'm just looking at the image slideshow. And, um, yeah, and again, going back to the cannabis and the, the use and the other one, that now I'm pretty much uh, stream nine. remember actually making this spiral specifically and I was dragging everything across. So now, yeah, you're going to start to see candidates, folks. And, um, which is, uh, yeah, pretty sure you'll see them after you see a couple of the ones. And um, you're only going to see one of them. It's just I've set it up. So that, um, I've actually just got two windows up there. It's the exact same thing. Just so I thought it looked fancy. And uh, now I know where to put the chat, and I do apologise, Greg. I'm going to keep that chat up there from now on, make sure it's refreshed every day so that um, that comes into it. The, um, the Sorry for putting you on the spot there a few times about the thing, but the point is, everybody, I know what I'm doing. I really do know what I'm doing, and I, I wouldn't be standing here telling you that um, this party deserves to be in because this party does. This party actually cares. And yes, we care about everything else. Yes, there are problems here, there are problems there. Uh, there might be, someone might come to us if we're members and say, look, we've got a problem here, they're doing this, doing that. What can you do about it as a politician? That's our job. We get, when we go to Canberra or where we, wherever we go, the first thing they do is teach us how Parliament works. What you've got to do when you've got to attend a meeting, if you've got to attend it here, you go there, you've got to vote, you go here, you go there. That simple. Very easy, very swift and everything. But the thing is we need everybody in there. We need as many people up and running to do it. But see, without your help, it's not going to happen because the few of us that are out there now can't do everything, and we can't. Anybody that thinks we can is an idiot, and I'm sorry, there's no other word, because the simple fact, we're trying to do our best to get you to come and help us. And I've got a week to stream and stream and stream 
and those the others the reps are out there they're doing press interviews trying to do the same we're all calling for volunteers in our own way shape and form all i am is just a member of the party i'm just one of the underlings man i'm way down the bottom these days and i don't care i actually um think that's where i need to be at the moment because i can do something now that I used to do all the time. And this is where I excel, um, getting the message out there. And if I, that's all I do for the party, I'll be happy. It's sort of, but I'm gonna do my bit. I'm gonna go and volunteer. I'm making sure that four booths have got posters up there for five days. Uh, making sure they're taken down when they've got to be taken down. Making sure there's, this is done. Making sure that's done. Making sure there's leaflets here for everybody. Um, the thing is, it's sort of, uh, no, it's all right, mate, don't worry about it. Oh, spell checkers, I hate the damn things. YouTube needs a damn spell checker, I'm sick of it. Um, but the whole point is, until people start standing up, and I mean until people start standing up, folks, this is going to constantly go on and constantly go on and constantly go on. It's never going to damn stop. But if everybody turns around and puts in a bit of help, if everybody turns around and makes that help count by showing up and saying, look, would you like a part? Would you like this? Here you go. Cannabis party. Like, even if it's that simple, it's that word of mouth on the day because that's how we made money in my club. It's not a hard thing to do, guys by simply going up and doing it. Sorry, I've got to look at it. I've got a computer screen here, I've got a computer screen here, over here, and um, I've even got one round there. Because uh, um, I'm virtually in a studio, it's my lounge room is my studio. My office, my business is right behind me at the moment. Because uh, um, of a certain event, everything had to come home. So pretty soon, I think you're going to see candidates. I hope you're going to see candidates soon. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, you're going to see candidates very, very soon. I think we're getting close to the candidates. Yeah, we are. We're getting very, very close to the candidates. Um, two, three, four, five. A few images away, folks. Most probably about 10 in images away. You'll start to get to see the candidates. And um, if I can get it big enough so I can read it, I'll actually call them out for you. And to do that, Greg, I've got to actually hide you for a second. So I can't read the chat for a second, Greg, until I move it. So you bear with me, dude. Okay. So now, oh no, what have I done? Can't enlarge that without losing the other. Oh, there we go. So yeah, a few images away, a few little images away, guys. But that's the point about it. We need the cannabis party in to get cannabis legalised. We won't get it legalised if people don't help. Right. The, the point of a candidate is to go and help, but they're doing the big job. But if we can all get out there and do our little job, which is go and help and get this out there, it's a matter of just doing that. By going out and helping everybody, oh, we are so close to the candidates. Yeah, I'll give you a big drum roll in a second. No, which image to you start giving you the drum roll? I'm gonna give you the drum roll. The, um, the thing is, it's sort of, it's us, the people. And you gotta remember, this, the power of the people. The power of the people, think about it. Where do you think that saying come from? If it wasn't true, that means the power of the people together. Look at what the uh, One Certain Movement has done in America at the moment. They're going a bit nuts, but look what they've done. Okay, the drum roll. Oh man, the drum roll. We're getting there, we're getting there. Oh, it's close, folks, it's close. So, um, yeah. You're going to meet all our candidates. But here we go. Get ready for our first candidate, folks. Get ready for our first candidate. Here she comes. 
Oh no! Oh no! There was one more. Oh, no, there's one more image. Where's it bloody? What's it doing? Why is it jump there? Where's it? Oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't see the other image up there. I do apologise. There's another image up top. I didn't see that bugger. Ah, okay. This is going. Oh, that has just bloody skipped everything. Maybe if I refresh it. Ah, oh, damn. What a bugger. Okay, I'm going to fix this. I was going to think which one it is. I'm going to turn, gonna turn both slideshows off for a second, folks. Uh, what have I done? <laughs> what have I done? Oh shit, what have I done? Oh no, no, what have I done, what have I done, what have I done? Not there. And one. Yeah, okay, that's there. So where'd the other one pop to? Oh no, I've screwed up my screen. I'm oh, sorry guys. That's my fault, trying to get you there. The members, but there's all the members there. You can't see them until I fix this problem. Uh, so I'm trying to fix it. And uh, where the hell am I done? What the hell am I done? There we go. Just put it over the top without realising that I do apologise, folks. Turn something on that I shouldn't have turned on. But the point is that if we can turn around and make a difference here, that we can change laws. As I said, we've got 23. Or we've got more than enough to make a difference in Parliament. If we can get every member in, think about it. If we can truly get every member in, and how are we going to get them in? Okay, first off, this is the first thing I want every cannabis smoker, every cannabis user every medical cannabis person to do. Vote. Vote one. Vote above the line in the zero column for the cannabis party. That's how you need to vote. It sort of... Because that will get us into power. Because all these beautiful candidates out there are actually good candidates. I've met a couple of them. I didn't actually realise there was this many. Um, I'm going to open this up. So there we go. Just going to reselect it. I didn't realise I put it in the stream. Is that right? That's what's screwed me up from the fact that I was stuck in streams. 991, there we go. Streams 991. So there we go. This should fix the problem and we should get candidates up any second. As soon as I hit OK, let's revamp it. We've got a new thing, I'll transition it back over. So hopefully it uh, brings up the candidates any second. But yeah, the, th the point is, that as long as everybody keeps on saying, oh, one day it might get legal, one day, all this crap, it's never going to get legal if you keep on saying that. It really won't. We need every physically abled person to turn around and help. We really do. Because if we don't get out there and volunteer, as I said, last election, I just got out of hospital after a heart attack. And I worked the whole day just after a heart attack and told that I was on death's door. I was determined not to go down. And um, I think that actually helped me get up because I wasn't going to give up the fight. I was going to keep that fight up and constantly keep that fight up. And this, joining the party has actually given me 
far more purpose. Come on, guys, give me a bloody politician. And because uh, I really want you to see our politicians that we actually have quite a crew. Maybe if I wasn't sick, maybe, okay, the possibility of getting a candidate up here any second. Possibility. And if, did I fix the problem? Yes, I did. Okay, so there is our first candidate. We have Josie Tanson. Josie Tanson is representing Monaco. This is Tim Pateman. He is representing Penwick. And, uh, yeah, we have Keys Manley. He w he's representing Mile Lakes. And, um, yeah, we have Greg White representing Bega. We have Mark Sealand representing Tweed. So I'd say that's the bloke that you'll have put in, Greg. We have Andrew Fenwick at Cessnock. Dude, I think I know this man. Um, Megan Matthew at Oxley. And thank you to all the candidates for um, being candidates too. We have Anthony Zibic from Bathurst. Nice bearded gentleman, don't you like the beard? We have Patricia Holt. Out at Orange. I haven't seen these one yet. We have Jacob Popconyak. Sorry, mate, I can't pronounce your last name. I do apologise. Down at Fairfield. We have Mia Wilmont. I spent the election with Mia. She was one of the lovely ladies at the booth with me at my local booth last year. We have Ben Hartley at Barwon. We have Peter Foster at Blacktown. We have Mark Littlejohn at Dubbo. That's a name I know as well. I lived out there for many years. I've known that name for sure. Uh, Thelma, I think that's Thelma Elliston at Coss Harbour. Oh God, I love how the leaf behind it makes it look like the uh, Statue of Liberty. Susan Ray at Tamworth. We have Tim Clayton for Newcastle. Tim, I'll be doing my best job for you this week, mate. Don't worry. We have Vivian Mackham at Port Macquarie. Sorry, mate. Another name I can't pronounce. We have Daniel Dryden at Maitland. We have Tom Lillycrap and the Upper Hunter. We have Peter O'Glocklin in uh, Southern Northern Tableland, sorry. We have Mark Rayner at Clarence. Now I know we have another lady called V. Uh, what's V's last name? Uh, sort of. Um, she's going to be on the show in the next few days. Um, she's getting back to me. Uh, phone ran out of power. And, um, but I forget her name, but her, 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 I couldn't find her image actually. So yeah, V will be on the show in a, um, in a few days, within a few days. So um, yeah, unfortunately I didn't know where her image was. But those of you out there that have actually um, seen the candidates or some of the candidates, and I think there are a few more, I'm trying to find them as many as I can because I'm trying to do about 10 things at once here. Uh, that's the thing, when you volunteer, sometimes you wind up doing other little jobs and you wind up running around doing everything you need to do. And uh, it's great fun sometimes, it really is. It is actually fun doing other stuff like this. But yeah, they finally fixed the problem. We've got the candidates up on the screen, but we are missing one that I know of. And um, I do know her name is V. I met V on the uh, last week, I think, last week. And I spoke with V again today, and we spoke about the show and everything. She was able to do it tonight. Um, but 
the thing is I've got to make sure that they all know that they have to have teams set up ready to go uh, so that we can actually do the show and get out there and get going because I'm trying to get as many candidates on and I do apologize for tonight it was meant to have Karen Verge with it um, and I think Karen's image is not up there is it yeah I don't think her image is up either so a um, couple more images so there's two more so that's even more we have enough to actually have a sitting party fair enough it may have to be a uh, coalition but we have enough people to sit with another party, as I said. Say, for instance, if us and the Greens got all the votes, which is still a good possibility that could happen, we could form a coalition with the Greens and finally get rid of the other party. We could become a third party. Because, like, the Nationals and the Greens generally run with the Liberals. But if they don't get enough votes and we've got all the votes, and it could happen. If, and I'll tell you how it's going to happen you because i know for a fact that 99 percent of people well, number one that i know are all cannabis smokers i know there is a percentage of people out there the official is 91 percent of people have or used smoked or believe that cannabis should be legalized so there are enough of us out there you've seen the candidates you know that we're a serious party now, and we really are a serious party. I'll tell you now, I would not be involved. Like, I've been offered to go and join this party, go and join that party over the years. Everybody knew I was a Labor voter. They all tried to get me to sway. Every then, the Liberals eventually talked me into it, and I eventually jumped parties, joined them for a little while, joined back with the Labor Party, went over here, went over there and voted for this party, but it, it was always Liberal, Labor, Liberal, Labor, Liberal, Labor. I could never find a party. I did try, as I said, I tried the Greens party for a week until I found out the yeah, I didn't agree with the policies. Um, but that's what it's like. That's what politics are. And just joining a party doesn't mean you have to do everything. doesn't mean you have to do anything. Just being a member and voting is enough. But at the moment, we are a backroots party. We are the underdogs. And I mean, we are the underdogs. Fair enough, like last year, made us come up the rank a little bit. But we're still an underdog. We have the most controversial agenda that there is. But our agenda is only controversial because of movies like Reef of Madness. Because I guarantee you, if Reef of Madness never happened and the Prohibition never happened, our party most probably still would have um, come to power, like in eventually, uh, but not as a legalised party. Most probably all the people that are involved now most probably would have been a, a party to support that group that made all the products and things like that. And that's what politics is about, naturally. Politics is about this man going here, that man going there, and everybody, and then we all go into one room. Well, I won't be there because I didn't sign up. And everybody goes into one room and votes. You, you make your vote cast and you know what's going on. You generally know what's going on before. You get to wear a suit. And, um, yeah, you get to be someone responsible and everything. And just because we smoke cannabis doesn't mean shit. Nearly every other politician just drinks alcohol. And they, alcohol can turn into idiots. You remember, Greg, do you remember the saying, how to make an instant idiot? What do you do? <laughs> hey, Gregory, what do you do? How do you make an instant idiot, Greg? It sort of, um, yeah, I'm not going to give this one away. But it's true. There is only one way to make an instant idiot. And I know for a fact that every nightclub had the same answer. There's only one thing that makes an instant idiot. It's, two, it's a two-word answer. So I, I think he's watching TV again. But um, there is only one thing that makes an instant idiot. There really is. And, um, but cannabis doesn't make an instant idiot. It might make um, people yeah, sit back, relax and everything. Can you see? And again, look at me now. I'm back to the way I was at the beginning of the video compared to being on these. That two-hour... that period how long now was it about two hours i think it was about two hours i think it was actually 
pretty sure it was about two hours. I'll have a look, I'll tell you. But, um, so I know how long it was before I took them. Ah, what's going on here? Bloody thing. Where's the stats gone? What's this? What's my stats? The whole point is, folks, that we have a chance. And that chance is now. And we need to take advantage of that chance, right? Because as I said earlier in the video, the, it's not the federal government actually stopping it. They, what they, they were real cunning. They were. They were cunning. And this is how they did it. They said, yes, okay, we agree with the TGA, but we believe that the state should have the power on the decision. So they left every state to have the power on the decision. In other words, they didn't want to make the decision. They didn't want to bear the brunt of yeah, all the other politicians in America coming down on top of them. Because America would have come down on top of them. We'd legalised it years ago. But look, America's legal. Canada's legal. Mexico. India. Uh, India's a bit iffy, but it's still sort of legal. Um, definitely Thailand. So all these countries, and we're behind the worst countries. We are. We're behind the worst. We're still not legal. We are not legal at all. And the problem is, it's because of the simple fact we have arguments going on. They don't want this. They don't want that. And sort of, if we do that, then no, we don't get the credibility and. The whole point is that um, we have to ask ourselves that um, what we are doing and why we are doing it. And if you ask yourself why we should vote Legalised Cannabis Party, it's the only way it's ever going to happen. It's the only way. Because even if that is... Yeah, there it is. Just add alcohol. How you get an instant idiot just add alcohol and hello sherry i haven't seen you in a while darling where you been god it's been donkey since i've seen you yeah and um, oh okay the southern uh us and parts not yet legal yeah, it's very frustrating some places and not others um avoiding uh, chronology and legalization everywhere it's not yet on the local level matters okay yeah. but good to see you sherry good to see you and we've got our politicians are back what i'm going to do is i might even make a little file just for those guys and everything and i'm going to try and find the rest of them tomorrow and get every candidate up there and i'm just going to have a window going all the time for them i might have one phone throwing the images the other one just the candidates so we get everybody up there this time but um yeah but the problem is, as long as the people out there say, oh, it should be legal, it should be legal, and they don't do anything about it. Yeah, I've, I've been pretty crook, Sherry, uh, but I'm back and up and running again. And I uh, got some good news from the doctors uh, the other day. Um, the doctor was so excited, she sent me seven texts, no, eight texts, and um, to tell me that my liver's on the mend. Uh, went from 653 all the way down to under 50 again and um, it was also uh, my kidneys are still leafy but getting better um, I haven't had any heart problems since last year thank god um, had minor stuff but yeah, it's a lung problem I've got at the moment I yeah, got a sinus issue and unfortunately it went down the back of my throat and got in my lung so but I'm alright now I'm getting there I'm getting there slowly darling I'm getting there slowly but that's what happens when you get old. That gets worse. And as you can see, I'm still just as handsome as I was. I haven't changed. Blue beard's still handsome. Just don't have a blue beard at the moment. Didn't feel like a blue beard. Didn't go with my white shirts. It sort of it was actually staining. It was staining my white shirts actually. And uh, so I sort of stopped dyeing the beard for a little while. And. Um, I've been trying to do what I can. I've been flat chat trying to get this thing lobbying, working the other side of the thing, 
doing loan things up until I joined the party last year. So, um, yeah, but now I'm actually happy and I'm in a party that I actually believe in. And I actually believe that this is the first time we actually have a chance. And I really mean that, guys. I actually really mean it. We have a chance. Look at the part with, okay, with uh, V and um, thing, that's 25 that I know of. So we went from 23 now to 25 because V uh, couldn't find her image. Um, she's out the out near Coonabarra Brand way, out the way, way back. She's a, she's a good old girl, and uh, but not old, but a good girl, and so a country girl. And um, she's standing up. These people are standing up. Okay, these, these are the people that are putting their hearts and their minds and their reputations out there for everybody to see. And this is what we're not asking you to do all we're asking you to do is come and help us. Come out, hand out tickets. And this is seriously all I ever did in training my staff for the nightclub. Hi. Hi, my name's Tony. Would you like a um, ticket to the club? The election. Hi, my name's Tony. Would you like a, would you like a uh, leaflet on the cannabis party? They'll say no, they'll say yes. And they'll say, oh, okay, great. Good to see you here. You'd be surprised at how often we actually heard that. And people are actually even coming and talking to us because it's the first time they've ever seen the legalised cannabis party in such a force at an election booth. It was so, like, and dead set, the other party thought we were going to protest because the girls, like, while I was at home and everything like that, uh, the girls had set up a, um, what do you call them, a gazebo, because it was planning to rain and everything like that. And a good thing they did, because like at one stage of the game, it came down something shocking. Everybody we had, <laughs> every single party, huddling under our gazebo. But that's the reason why it was there, it was to protect us, and we didn't care it was. We had the uh, voters coming in quite often and everything and all you've got to do is if you're a volunteer just introduce yourself you'd be surprised at how quickly that introduction can get someone to listen to you because generally whenever i talk to somebody my first thing is i don't even have the ticket in my hand when i do it it's in my left say hi my name's anthony how are you um would you like a ticket and um, but my hand is there but I've worked it's a bit quicker if you go hi my name's Tony uh, I've got a leaflet here for the cannabis party and uh, you'd be surprised I didn't get that many people knocking it back the reason why because I introduced myself and when I did get that 10 seconds right because some of the times I'd only get 10 seconds sometimes I get 30 seconds sometimes we got 5-10 minutes with these people because they were actually coming and talking to us and um, but when generally when I got the 10 seconds right they would turn around and they would say okay yeah okay thanks no worries yeah I'm sort of a cannabis supporter and everything I'll be voting everything like that but when they sort of think oh yeah I sort of don't really know about it and I said well look can I just tell you something and I said look this do you want to know why oh, I personally jump party Pulled out the room, got, put my hand in the pocket, got my script out. I said, that's my script. I can't afford to get it filled. That bottle, the, the first bottle that was originally just prescribed to me, and by the way, that is one of those bottles. That bottle cost $600. It was one of the most expensive of all the oils. It just happened to be the one that my doctor at the time put me on it was a lower dose than the one I was on it didn't really work that well still sent me back 600 it wasn't CBD it was TAC with some CBD in it and um, it was just the company the company they went broke because they were just charging too much and um, but the whole point is folks that when you are turning around and you're asking yourself is it possible that we could actually do something 
Yes, it is. One, we have enough members. So far I've counted 25 that I've got images for and I will make sure and I'll try and work out the exact number of candidates. I will ring the leader of our party tomorrow or text him and ask him how many candidates we actually have because I can't find all the images. I'll let him know that as well so I can get the rest of the images so I can get them appearing on one side of the screen. And um, But the point is, folks, we need you. We need you, the people, to come and help us. We need you, the people, to come and say, hey, look, I can come and do two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours, six hours. Oh, man, I can come for the whole day. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I'll be all right. I'll, I'll be here the whole day. But if you get someone that says they'll be here the whole day, make sure they get a break, um, especially if you're a supervisor and you're looking after the booth like I've taken on that responsibility. I've only got four booths, and I've got to make sure that they're looked after. That's my job. I've offered to do it and I'm doing it on the day. Even if I have to drive from one to the other, one to the other. I'm going to make sure my people have leaflets. I'm going to make sure they've got posters. I'm going to make sure everything is done. I'm going to make sure they've all got posters the day set up, ready to go. So there's no problems. And there's others like me out there. There's many others like me out there that are organising to get their own volunteers there, they're doing what they can to do the job and everything like that. But we're spread very thinly, and we are, because there's not that many of us. I forget the exact number of members in the party, but that we're not a um, massive party yet, but we are growing because people are waking up. Everybody is waking up to the fact that we have a very, very huge chance of actually winning the election. We truly, truly do have a chance at winning this election. And even if it's just to get our people into the seat, because that is the aim. Our aim is to put the people in those pitches on a seat in that parliament so that we, when it comes time, when the next bill gets put forward, or we most probably more than likely going to put a few through ourselves, trying to change all the laws. We stand more chance because of the number of us. It's why Labor, when Labor get in, Labor get things done, because there's enough of them in Parliament to do it. There's enough in the thing. But our party is growing. We have more people standing up and saying, OK, it's time. As I said, I may run yet. I, not this election, but down the road, yeah, I may run. Uh, because I'm seeing a point to running. I'm hoping that by then my health is back and everything, I've lost weight, and because uh, I'm a bit overweight at the moment due to quitting smoking, because when I quit smoking, I picked up lollies, and big mistake, big mistake, quit smoking, don't pick up lollies. And I've just spent the last 26 years trying to get rid of it. But the whole point is, guys and girls, if you don't come and volunteer, we're not gonna get anything done. We need help. And we're doing the right thing. We're asking for that help. And that's all we're doing. We're asking for your help. It's like saying, oh, okay, Joe Blade down the road needs a hand with loading his trailer. And you walk up to him and say, oh, look, Joe, do you need a hand? Oh, thanks, mate. That's what we're asking, just for that hand. We're asking for the hand for the day. Maybe two days. If you can't help on a weekend... The early voting centres are open Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And they need to have somebody there at the booth as well. And rather than just pay, it's better to have someone there handing out tickets because it's that ticket. That. Because generally it was the tickets that got everybody into our nightclub. It was because we had these tickets. And that was the point. Sometimes we had tickets that, that big. And sometimes we had tickets that small. I'm sorry, that small. God, we even had once, I think it was the 20 cent drink party, we had tickets that big. Uh, so, uh, oh shit, <laughs> better take that. Sorry. Uh, yeah, that's to fight my lung infection. Oh, I forgot to take it. But those of you out there, breaking news, next federal election, vote one. <laughs> no. I do not want to take Scott. No, 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 fucking way, mate. I would not do that job. No way in that wide world. 
maybe in 10 years you might be able to talk me into it. But, nah, it's the one job I don't want, mate. I want a job where I can push the bastard. Whoever's sitting in that seat, do what I, I want to do what I did with Dita. Because you've got to admit, there were those days that I had, everybody thought I had Dita worked around my little finger. But it wasn't really. All I did was build trust. But Dita realised I could do what I could do, and I built that trust. It wasn't uh, wrapping the rim around my finger. All I did was do what he wanted, but the way I knew, knew it needed to be done. And um, there's so many things in this country that need to be changed, folks. There really is. There are far too many things in this country that need to be changed. We need to turn around and change this up. We need to turn around and make sure that this election happens. And when I say happens, yeah, I know, mate, I know, yeah. But I'm here, I'm doing this. This is what I can do now. I can do this in my medical health condition at the moment. Oh, I'm not overburdening myself. This is not that stressful. It's not as stressful as the club was. But if I can do this much for the party, man, I'm happy. This is what I'm doing for the party. What can you do? If you've got a skill that you think could help the party, offer it. God, even if you said, okay, well... I can't, I don't want to help out of here at Toronto where I live or I might come into town where you are, is that okay? Yes, that's perfectly fine. If you, Greg lives in uh, Queensland, Greg is popping over to the state border and it's going to help out on election day at one of the polling booths. And um, everybody I know is going to help out. The thing, you know, like as I said, I rang another mate that I was in the doctor's surgery. I'm ringing me mate up and I said, well, look, mate, I know I haven't spoken to you a little while. I told him I was crook and everything, which I was. I didn't lie to him. We're talking about something else and our mates and stuff like that. And um, he said, look, I can't do it because my, my knees are bad now and everything. And as I said, he had a major disability prior to that. And um, But he is going to do what he can to help me because he knows just as many dope-smoking people as I do. And yeah, I call it dope. It sort of um, it was called dope because they reckoned all of us were dopey when we were using it, so they got the nickname dope, uh, where dope was actually more for an aeroplane. And the point is, if we turn around and we don't stand up, everybody, if we do not stand up, that will be the. Thanks, mate. Yeah, oh, I'll tell you now, I'll take you up on that. If it actually ever does happen, Greg, I'll actually take you up on that because I know you would. And um, But the point is, it's the volunteers. These people here, Mark Rayner, all the other candidates have turned around and said, OK, enough is enough. They've got the courage to stand up all the way to become a candidate. They're standing up. And, but... We've got, I forget what his name is, uh, Michael's gone now, but I'll get all the names because as I said, we've got one of the other parties, he's jumped ship, he's come over to us and he's now with us and um, promoting the Cannabis Party. And why? Because he saw the value, he saw the true value of, um, oh wow, I just, I just realised I've got a nice little halo, how about that, check that out. Ooh, spooky. But, um, yeah, you can tell that the, these are wearing off. But, again, going back to that same subject, Matthew. Uh, oh, g'day, g'day, Jigger. Yeah, g'day, man, how are you? Yeah, another face that I haven't seen in a while. Sorry, guys, I have been away for a very long time, and I do know that, but did you all know that actually most of that time I couldn't stream? Yeah, they... They, they were going through all my videos, every 9-11 video, every conspiracy video, they were giving me strikes. I'd get, a, get one strike removed, next thing I know, a week later I'd have another strike. And I don't know whether someone was deliberately at trying to get my account cancelled or whatever. But, um, yeah, I spent, oh, God, half a year. I'd say, like, 
the strike they and YouTube were really funny about it. They'd let the strike disappear before they gave me another one, but at one stage they did give me two, and um, and that was one, and that was when I made the decision to go in and rip every conspiracy video out. I stuck them on another channel, um, and um, yeah, so they're still out there. They're just on another channel, and um, but. They haven't had the excuse to give me strikes for a, for a while, so I've been able to start streaming again. I'm trying to avoid that. It's one one word I didn't want to say. It got said, and I told him that if it said that they could stop the stream altogether. Uh, I think all you know what that one word is. It's got something to do with a certain event that lasted for certain years, and um, yeah. So um, it's just a matter of doing it, folks. But if you have the ability to stand and everything like that, I don't know when I showed you my back if you could see it, but I have what they call the smiley scar across my back. And I really do have a heart, heart condition. I mean, I can show you all the stab wounds from my, um, yeah, little experience. The stab wounds in me. Yeah, that was from the robot. The uh, bloody robot. Yeah, stabbed me five times, I think it was. But you can see the scar on my back. And if I can do that with that back, that back and um, on a walking stick, the bum knees, and there's the walking stick, on a walking stick, it's fresh out of hospital after a heart attack. Bad wrists, bad shoulder, in pain all day long. My liver at the time was playing up something shocking. And I mean, it was playing up something shot, and I think I went home twice on the day because of the smell. Not only had to take medication, but I had to actually change clothes because they stank of highly strong ammonia. And um, the point is, it's sort of, I still got out there and did it. If I can do that, why can't you? Why can't you? You sit there and you say, Oh, it should be legal, oh, Tony. You, you, you got to give up, mate. You're never going to get it legal. But the thing is, it will become legal if we get together and do something about it. Okay, what's this? I hope you are able to vote for the party next Saturday. Oh, you're talking to Matthew. Sorry, mate. Um, yeah, we need volunteers, Matthew. Yeah, we need volunteers, man. So, are you one of the... Um, do you say a Lyle's mob or are you one of the Aussie mob or one of the American mob? I forget, Jigger. It's been a while since I've seen you. You haven't been in here for donkey's ages because I haven't been streaming for donkey's ages. Um, but, yeah, we need volunteers. If you live in Australia, mate, if you can get to a New South Wales polling booth on any of the days, we need volunteers left, right and centre. I've got a... I'm going on with this damn camera. But, um, yeah, the point is, it's only us that are able to do something about it. We are the people. And as I said before, people power. People power. You have enough people doing something, it gets done. But this is what I mean. The bulk of us are out there of the party already doing what we can. Yeah, we've still got a couple of people who might, might, might be sitting at home, but they're, they're guaranteed they've got a reason. Guaranteed. I know a few people that are actually, yeah, as I said, one of them is in a wheelchair. She's not there every day. She's going to make sure she's there on a certain day. And um, I know what day, I know what I've got to do, and um, yeah. I know, yeah, I know. I've seen you in and out of the channel for some time, Digger. It's sort of, um, sometimes I don't actually respond, but I do actually know everything because there's a report system now that tells viewers here how long they were here for and everything like that, analytics and all that. So I can go through all that. But, um, yeah, if you happen to be in Australia at the time, nothing says that you can't volunteer to hand out tickets, mate. So it's up to you. If you want to risk arrest for the rest of your life, and this is this is what it really boils down to, and I might get in trouble with Michael for saying it, but if you truly want to risk being arrested for the rest of your life, sit back and do nothing. 
because that's what's going to happen. If you don't stand up and do something, you will be at risk, especially if the other parties get in and do what they want to do, which is make the drug laws tougher, it means you will be risking arrest even harder. They'll come down tougher on drug dealers, which is one of the promises that the Liberals made, and they're going to come down, even if you're just a one-person man, even if you're not a grower, they're going to come down on you. And um, when a government makes a promise like that, they generally keep it. So I'm sort of just saying, look, help us stop that happening. Stand up. You must have stood up one time in your life and stood up for something you believed in. For Christ's sake, you're a cannabis user. You're a cannabis smoker. You believe in cannabis. Now is that time to come and stand up. Because if you guys stand up... Okay, think about this. How many friends have you got in prison because of cannabis? I've only got one friend and I've got a really that's there. Uh, distant, really, but um, relative, really is a relative for those that don't live in Australia. And um, the thing is, it's sort of everybody at least knows somebody that has gone to prison over cannabis. For God's sake, I was in my garden the other day. I met a man that just went to prison for three years. Not long out. Not long out. Spent time with a certain cousin. So it sort of tells you that these people, are, all they're trying to do is have pain relief, have something to relax at the end of the day because, like, you go and have a beer at the pub, you generally, 95% of the time, you stand a good chance of winding up in a fight. If you went to a cannabis bar, You'd be sitting there, you'd be mellowed out, you'd be talking about it. Yeah, you might wind up talking about ethics, you might wind up talking about crap, you might talk about spaceships, I don't care what you're talking about. When you're stoned, you tend to talk a lot more. Okay, here we go, we have John, Josie Tenzin from uh, Monaco. Take a breath. We have Tim Pateman, I got it right that time, Tim, at Penworth. Sure, I know a couple of these people. We have Keys Manly at My All Lakes. And just because he's young these days, there's a lot of young politicians these days. We have Greg White out at Vega. Nice place, Vega, Greg, by the way. I, I liked it when I went through. Very nice place. We have Mark Sellen at Tweed. Yeah. That's the bloke you must probably be helping to get in, mate, so... Andrew Fenwick out at Cessnock, and as I said, I think I know that dude from somewhere. We have Megan Matthew out at Oxley. We have, uh, for the legislative assembly, I forgot to be reading those, we have Anthony Zibic at Bathurst. Candidate for the Legislation Assembly, Patricia Holt at Orange. We have Jacob Pot Cognac. Pot Cognac. I hope I got it right, Jacob. I really do. Uh, down at Fairfield. And Mia Wilmont at Shell Harbour. As I said, Mia was uh, one of the two young ladies that were with me out at the uh, local booth. We had Ben Hartley at Barwon. We have Peter Foster at Blacktown. We have Mark Littlejohn out at Dubbo. Another name that rings a bell. Again, I spent many years out at Dubbo. We have Thelma Elliston out at Cos Harbour, and I love how you made that uh, leaf your crown, darling. I really do. We have Sue Ray over at Tamworth, a country girl. We have Tim Clayton here in Newcastle. He's the bloke that I'll be helping get into power. And I'm going to do my best, Tim. Trust me, I'm going to do my best for you, mate. We have Vivian uh, Mack. 
Mac, McMahon, and McMahon, sorry, mate. I forgot what town he was in. Daniel Dryden now up at Maitland. Uh, yeah, yeah, my family comes from that way, mate. Now, Tim, Tom, sorry, Tom Littlecrap at Upper Hunter. We have Peter O'Loughlin at Northern Tablelands. Mark Rena out at Clarence. Yeah. And uh, Greg has just said something, if you read the screen, Greg has said something really, really interesting that I know for a fact is true. Uh, Tony, you get a bunch of drunks and they all want to do is argue, fight, and literally want to kill each other. You get a bunch of potheads, and all they want to do is solve all the solutions in life. It's actually very, very true, Greg. It really is. It's sort of because you're calm, you collected everything like that. But look, guys and girls, it's now getting on in time. I've now been streaming for some time. It's, whoa, I've been streaming for a long time. I reckon I'll reach the people that I need to reach. The video will keep on going on the on the thing. It'll take air and forever to upload and uh, things. So if you missed the video, it will be up as a video. Sorry for going so quickly after you got here, Matthew. I do apologise for that. But I have been going for quite some time. I've been going since about... Uh, we did eventually fix the stream about 8 o'clock. So, um, yeah, I've been going since 8 o'clock. So five hours. Wow, five hours I've been talking. No wonder my throat's sore. But anyhow, guys, look, thank you for coming along. And, yeah, uh, it's sort of, and that's the purpose of a stream, because we're in a stream, I then take it out, chop her up, take out all the good bits, make sure there's no bad bits in there, and pop her up as a video. It might be 10 minutes shorter. It could be the exact same length. You never know. So I've got to go through and edit, edit that next, but I'll do that in the morning. But anyhow, folks, thank you very much for coming along. Thanks for coming along, Greg, and uh, moderating the channel as usual. I do appreciate it, dude. And uh, thank you, Ma Matthew uh, Lesbian Jigger. Thank you to... Uh, where is he? Where is he? Where is he? What the hell is that to the chat? Oh, Michael Phil Murray, Sherry S. Thank you very much for coming along to the show. And it's, by the way, it's nice to be back. And by the way, out there, everybody, don't forget to like and subscribe. One for one reason, I've got to get the views up again so that I can get the channel back up because naturally when you get strikes, they demonetize you, which they did to me. And um, so I've got to get all these across the other channel. But once again, thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to subscribe. And remember, when you subscribe, guys and girls, to click the little bell and because if you don't click that little bell you won't be notified when I do the next stream or drop the next video and yeah it's generally you miss out on all that stuff when you forget to uh, click the bell but also don't, for click, don't forget to click the like button because the way YouTube works now is that al algorithm the more likes we get on the video the more the video will be selected. And it's a way the new YouTube algorithm, pardon me, the new YouTube algorithm works. So yeah, but uh, once again, thank you very much for coming along everybody. I'm gonna hit the sack guys because I am dog tired. And um, yeah, I haven't actually think about it. I haven't even fed the poor puppy dogs yet. So I better feed them before I go to bed. So once again, thank you very much, everybody, and I shall catch you up. I'll be doing this tomorrow. I'll we'll be doing it the day after. So yeah, come along and catch the show. Thanks very much, everybody, and I shall see you all later. Ciao for now.